On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. It's nothing that you can do to stop a competitive edge. It's just in the water. Welcome back to a special quarantine edition. We got a real special guest. What's up with your Brody with the virtual handshake? I'm going to tell y'all something that I never told nobody. I want all the smoke. Welcome back to a special edition. Quarantine edition, man. We still mm -hmm. here, man. Of all the smoke. Jack, what's good out there in Atlanta, my brother Ren. Man, what's up, my bro? Walls closing in, but hey, if it wasn't for this show, I would have been pulled all the hair that I have on me out. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm good I now. I'm good I, now. I'm good. I don't recommend that, bro. You had a good length right now with your hair, and you, you like I said, you, we got to make a huge product for your beard. You gotta, you gotta run that shit. Man, the you know what? Spectacular. Man, I'm salt and pepper death. You know what, bro? I was, you know, I was leaning towards cutting it, but boy, it's gonna line him up and keep it rolling. Yeah, man. keep it moving. You, 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 you're attracting that more sophisticated. <laughs> you hit that more sophisticated audience now. Like you look like you got something to say right now. So that mean, that mean I can go to some of these parties you be going to with you now. Oh, the sophistication, yeah. It, okay, the beard cool. Because you know your teeth kind of jump out when you be talking and shit, so now the beard, <laughs> the beard kind of calms it and brings it back in a little bit. <laughs> I knew something was coming. I knew something was coming. You, hey, you've been giving me too many compliments uh, the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I knew something was coming. <laughs> I knew something was coming. <laughs> You know me, man. Let me, let me get my uh, my shit right. Yes, sir. <sighs> With oh, the pretty man. boy product placement. You need pretty to read. Boy we, we can send you some. You need it. I got some pretty boy mist already. I use mine already. Yeah, I can I'm tell. That's why, right. your, that, that's why your shit, shit coming glowing. in nice. I've been my trying shit to tell glowing. you. Shout out to you. Oh, straight up. Hey, man, we got a special guest today, 14-year uh, NBA vet, uh, someone you and I had uh, battled against for a long time, NBA champ. My classmate, my classmate. Yeah, 96, Mickey D's All-American, uh, Rip Hamilton. Welcome to the show, my man. My brother. I, I kept asking myself, what took y'all so long, Stack? When, when, I, I, I was about to start calling you, Stack, like, yo, when is it my time to come on the show? <laughs> I knew you was gonna say that too, dog. I knew you was gonna say that. No, I, I hit him up. Gonna say that. I hit him up in his DMs, like, bro, we need you, man. We need, we, we need you to lock in. So it was cool, man. And we're glad you're able to join us. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to be here. Y'all, y'all killing it right now, man. Just man, to let y'all know very that. Much. Well, we appreciate it. It's, it's guests like you, man. We appreciate it. Go yeah, ahead, I, I, I bother you enough. With uh, trying to get that, <laughs> trying to get you on that doc stuff with the uh, with the bra doc. I'm like, I'm gonna get my bar break for a minute before I go back at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you though. You know, I got you. I know, now, I'm now I already know. I can't get to LA, so you know, ain't nobody flying right now. But yes, I got sir. you. Yes, sir. Rip, we see uh, you real salt and peppered up right now. What was everything good over there? Man, dude, <laughs> I'm going crazy like everybody else, man. Like, you know, the thing is, you can't let nobody touch your face. So my barber yeah. calls me. Every every now and then, it'd be like, hey, you want me to come through to cut you and the kids? I'm like, bro, like, I can't right now, man. I can't take any chances right now. So right. I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm letting it grow all out. And then, you know, after, you know, we're done quarantine, I'm just going ass face, man. <laughs> ass, <laughs> ass naked. Oh, High school days. Yes, ass naked. Or I'm going to go like Jack, like I told you, man. Just mustache, yeah, man. Just, just mustache down, man. Only. Hey, go, <laughs> hey go, ass, go ass face before you go just mustache that Burt Reynolds. Oh, that Burt go Reynolds, ass face. Hey, that's yeah, Burt Reynolds. Man. That's that good Burt Reynolds right there. Yeah, but I'm going through it right now, man. I, I had to wear a hat today, man, because you don't want to see the top. You know, I got <laughs> I got the I got the, the top open today, man. So Ooh, hey, the man, roof is hey, off, hey, huh? The did roof you, is hey, off, bro. Hey, did you did you did you go to did you get challenged by Ray Allen? Man, he did challenge me, bro, but I was scared. I ain't even going front. <laughs> I was like, man, at one point in time, this this quarantine thing gonna be over. And a yeah, lot of people yeah. be making memes about certain guys. So I was like, man, hold up, I'm man. A, I can't I'm go chill on, like on that, that one. Yeah, I'm going to fall on that back one, huh? on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Damn, that's tough, man. Anyway, man, how oh, are you and, man. you and the family holding down right now? Obviously, you said it's you know it's you in the, in, in the house with the fam. How, how's everything going with that? Man, it's cool, man. You know, you know our lifestyles, man. We've been on the road, 
you know, for so long since we've been 18 years old. So really it's been a long time where you've been in the house, you know, for 30 straight days where you ate everything that out of your refrigerator for 30 right. straight days. No <laughs> restaurants, no going out, no nothing. But uh, yeah. it's been cool, you know. Uh, I know my kids are sick and tired of hearing my voice because, you know, I'm playing dad. I'm playing, you know, trainer who they, 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 they don't even think I hoop. So, you know, anytime <laughs> I tell them something on the basketball court, it just goes out the window. But, uh, I know the I know the Helping out with schoolwork, which is tough because sixth grade math ain't like the sixth grade Man. math when we grew up. Man, what? <laughs> but, uh, I'm on, I'm on fifth grade. I'm on fifth grade math tripping out. I was on third grade math tripping out. Like the math is just way different now. Yeah. Plus it's been years since we did it. <laughs> yeah, so they got me on tilt right now playing chef, you know, on the grill cooking for them. But uh it's you know, it's a good time spending time with the family, just holding it down, man. Just happy I got a good situation at home. I saw yeah. that throwback grill you post, you said joint twenty years old, huh? With the ice chest underneath it. <laughs> Facts. Only the real people that know how to grill know what that grill is about. That thing is highly seasoned right there. <laughs> That's just a smoke. It look like a smoker built in and everything. That shit man, look good. It, man, it's been through rain, snow, <laughs> you know, sleet, you know, 100 degree weather out here in Florida. Yeah. Like, it's been through everything. Yeah, I seen that yeah. shit. When you post that shit, it's like, oh, that shit is beat up. But I bet you it could cook some good ass food, though. All purpose. All right. purpose, everything. Absolutely. <laughs> This Hall of Fame 2020 class, um, some are saying the greatest class ever, obviously with your brother Cole, rest in peace, uh, Tim Duncan, KG, guys that are in your age range. Uh, what are your thoughts on this class? I agree with you, man. It's, it's definitely uh, the best of all time, in my opinion. I mean, three guys that, you know, all three of us competed against our whole entire career. One trying to get through, uh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, I mean, that was the the, the greatest one-two punch that mm. I ever played mm. against, man. And Speak on it. You, you know, uh, and when you see him and Tim Duncan, you know, you know the air that they had with Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker. I mean, you knew once you went to San Antonio and Jack knows winning the championship there, man. It was hard to win in San Antonio, man. Pop did it the mm. right way. You know, they was going to do everything possible to try to beat you up, frustrate you, trip you, kick you. You know, Bruce Bowen was doing all that crazy yeah. stuff <laughs> back in the day, man. Yes. Like, you know, he was playing defense on offense uh, during during that time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, dumb three guys, KG, uh, exceptional career. And the one thing that I love about all three guys, man, they, they, they play hard on both ends, man. They just wasn't great offensive players. You know, they was on the all-defensive team. They made Absolutely. all all-star team, man. Them guys were animals. They were beasts, man. So... You know, hats off to all them, man. And, you know, them three guys were well-deserving. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's stay with Kobe, though. Um, you played in high school in Coatesville. Shout out Coatesville. I remember meeting all your homeboys from Coatesville, <laughs> McDonald's game. Shout out to all them, man. Uh, tell, us <laughs> about, tell us about that experience growing up in Coatesville and, and playing against Kobe in high school. Hey, first, first of all, man, you know, the guys, they, you know, they still talk about you, Jack. Uh, Matt, you know, when we played in the McDonald's All-American game, we played in, in Pittsburgh, so they weren't too far from the crib, right? Mm -hmm. And this one, I knew Stack was a real-ass dude, man. Because, uh, <laughs> for real, man, like, all my homeboys, you know, it was only an hour or so from, from the crib. They all drove up to the game, you know what I'm saying? And they, they all got their little rooms and stuff like that. And I remember coming in the room and... and and Stack hit it off right with all of them from the door, <laughs> right? You know, and, and, and they love Stack at the time, yeah, right? That's my so, boys, man. so they all that's in the room. I, I come in the room and it's funky in there. And, and when I say funky, I ain't talking about <laughs> you know yeah. sneakers or you it's, know a whole it's, bunch it's, of dudes. It's, li it's loud in there. Yeah. It's loud. It's loud in there, right? <laughs> you know, and and at the time I'm straight. I'm straight as an arrow, right? I ain't smoking. I ain't doing none of that. I'm you know yeah. I come from the neighborhood and I'm like, bro, I'm I ain't giving myself. No excuses why I ain't make it. I ain't gonna make it to the league. Yeah. And I come in that room and stack in there, <laughs> fired up, right? And I'm, and I'm looking at, and I'm looking at my homeboys. I'm like, yo, dog, y'all can't do that. We got, we got a game tomorrow on, on national TV. And at the time, you know. Back in the day, you know, young kids weren't playing on national TV. That was our first At time to, to the limelight. It was before all the social media era mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and, and Jack and they're getting fired up. I'm like, yo, dude ain't going to be ready for the game tomorrow. And Matt, when I say this dude came out the <laughs> next it. day, bro, 
I think Stat got MVP of the game. Like, like he was. I mean, uh, to the you point. The second one. He should. Hold on, 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 Rip. I don't want to cut you off, Rip. But you okay. and Kobe, you and Kobe said it. I am happy. I didn't win it. You remember they gave it to Shaheen Holloway. They did? Yep, I should have won it. I should have won the clearest day, bro. But, but you oh, said it. Oh, man. Kobe said it. I feel Kobe like said, I won yeah. it. Kobe Matter of fact, I got, I got a trophy. I got a trophy over here that somebody made me. A little small <laughs> trophy that say, <laughs> it says, 90, it says 96 McDonald's All-American game, dog. And I put it up on my trophy thing for real. Yeah, I, I should have won it. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. That's that. That's oh, dope. man, that, that's when I found out my bro was superhuman. I was like, man, dude, like, man, where you from? Like, man, what you be eating? Like, bro, like, Yo. so definitely. Hot, he was a hot, che hot Cheetos and Bloods. That's what he be yeah. eating. Oh, man, he was a trend center on that. That was the first time I seen someone came out, come out the next night and kill. But, I love uh, it. I love like it. Like you said, man, Cole was like a brother, you know, to, to all of us, man. He meant so much to myself because at the time, you know, I was a young kid in Coastville, Pennsylvania, and I thought I was the best thing since since sliced bread in my area. And this, like I said, this was before the social media era, you know, was I'm from a town, it's only 11,000 people there, you know, we right mm -hmm. outside of Coastville, so you don't know, you never get an opportunity to see all the the talent outside of that little town. I never been on a plane, I never been on a train. I, I grew up in my town, I ain't never leave, right? Mm -hmm. So my coach one day, he said to me, he was like, hey man, you think you, you you nice, man, but there's a kid down the street that is just as talented as you. I'm like, yeah, right, you gotta be kidding me. Hell nah. He was like, bro, he's 6'6", six, six, the same height as you. You know, he probably weighed 20 more pounds than you. He's probably way more athletic than you and probably can shoot, you know, from damn. a deeper range than you. Hey, this, I'm like, this your coach? Damn, this, this my your coach? coach? Yeah, I guess, I guess you, know, I come from, you know, from a tough town and, you know, nobody uh, gives you props in that area. Fact. So I was like, damn, bro, like, really, damn, coach, you going to break down my self-esteem like that? He like, nah, bro, I'm telling you. It's a kid down the street. And I'm not going to tell you who he is, but if, if we do what we're supposed to, we can meet up against him. In the, uh, in, in, in the playoffs. In the playoffs, so yeah. So I, I remember, you know, when we played against Lord Mary and looking down at the end of the court, just like the rest of the guys on my team was, right? And, you know, I had all kids on my team from the neighborhood. So, you know, I'm with all the homies that I grew up with, and half them dudes thought they were better than me, right? Yeah. And Cole team, you know, looked like a private school team, right? He, it, mm -hmm. he didn't look like he grew up with, you know, the dudes that I grew up with. So yeah. I'm like, man, it ain't no way. But I'm looking at his game, and I'm like, bro, like, damn. He down there doing 360s, you know what I'm saying? He doing the in-out double uh, crossover step back, shooting three feet behind the three-point line. I'm scratching my head. I'm like, damn, this, this dude... Looks for real, like, you know what I'm saying? I said, nah, Rip, he, you know, in my mind, I'm like, nah, Rip, he can't, he ain't better than me, ain't no he way in hell. He can't fuck with you, he can't nah, fuck with you. Nah, hell nah. <laughs> man, once that ball was thro thrown up, man, bro, look, after that game, I went back home, I looked myself in the mirror, and I said, hey, bro, you ain't what you thought though, you were. Y'all went at it, though, y'all went we, at it. We went at it, I'm, we went, went at it. it. You yeah, know. hold on, don't, don't, don't dim your light too now, y'all went at it. <laughs> we went at it, but that was the first time that I played against somebody at my position, right, yeah. that outscored me and won the game. You know, I yeah. think he ended the game with 30-something, I ended up with like 29, you know, and he won the game. So mm -hmm. that was a big thing to me, like you're not going to come, you know, to my hometown, you know, where, you know, I felt like I was the best shit since sliced bread and mm -hmm. make and make me look not like the best and yeah. he came out and showcased his game and you know right right from there that's when me and him start to 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 really communicate and, and start to get a relationship y'all play AAU together yeah so it was a a, a guy you know in philly because a weird thing happened uh we tried out i tried out for a team and uh it was called a keystone game and uh the coach already had you know, his team's, you know, made up already, like a lot of times these coaches have, right, before guys mm -hmm. even try out. So a lot of the guys that worked out on my team uh, that played with me in high school all got cut, and he was trying to cut me. So they ended up firing the coach, right? A new coach came in, a guy named Sam Ryans, right? So Sam Ryans came in and was like, hey, man, bro, I don't know where you from. I don't know where you been. Because like I said, I never got out of my little town. He was like, bro, but I'm going to pair you up and I'm going to go get this kid down the road named Kobe Bryant. And I was like, oh, man, I just played against that dude. Like, like, like all right, you know what? You know, like, like, he can rock out. Like, cool. So he got me and Kobe in the gym together, right? And that was the first time 
I started to see someone that had, you know, the mindset, you know, mm-hmm. of a killer. Like, like mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've been around a lot of great players, right? But I ain't never been around somebody like him that just had kill on his mind all day and all night. Mm-hmm. Like, it was basketball 24-7. Like, 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 like I remember one time we were uh, playing in a tournament, and I was like, hey, Kobe, like, uh, you know, last night, uh, me and my cousin Spud, you know, there's a little bar around the corner that they thought we were 21 years old. Like, they, they let us in, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, let's, let's go there after the game. And he looked at me, he was like, nah, Rip, you know, I got to get back to my room and ice my knees and watch tape. I'm like, what? At 16 years old, when we don't even stretch, like at 16, 17, Jack, you got to think about it. You go on the straight AAU games and you ain't even stretching. You just like, all right, where the rock at? Like, we just, we just hooping. And he talking about icing his knees down and watching film? I said, bro, this dude is, I looked at my cousin, I said, yo, bro, this boy, this dude is different. You know what I mean? From day one at like 16, 17 years old. But that just told you his mm-hmm. mindset of the game at, at a young age. That's why, you know, a lot of people start to, you know, talk to Kobe and be around Kobe once he was Kobe Bryant. Right, <laughs> right, right. Like, you know, right. A lot of t- you know, and a lot of times guys say, oh, you know what? Uh, you know, the big thing I always used to say, guys used to always say, hey, how many, sh- you go to an NBA player, you say, how many shots you shoot up a day? And guys be like, oh, I, I, I make, I don't, I don't leave the gym until I make a thousand. And I'd be like, man, that's, that's fool's gold. Not, not everybody mm-hmm. do that. You not know, not everybody like, do that. Like, like Cole, when Cole said he was doing something, bro, he, he was actually out there doing it. Hey, Rip, I, I used to tell people about the McDonald's game, like when he was there, he had a certain aura and a certain presence about him that we all knew he was going to be great, bro. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I tell a story, like, we, everybody has pictures with, like, group pictures together, but everybody mm-hmm. was taking one-on-one pictures with Kobe at the McDonald's <laughs> game because we all knew. Everybody knew, bro. I, don't, I got pictures with everybody, but Kobe is the only person I got a one-on-one picture with in high school, bro. We knew then that this dude was different, bro. Yo, he he was he was for real, man. Uh, Stack, he was. I mean, like we used to, because we, we were roommates too. Like so, all the AAU events, we were roommates and stuff like that. And I, I remember when he was talking about on your show, like he had the kill list, right? Mm-hmm. And it's and it's funny because you know we were roommates, and it was many times at night that this dude just didn't want to go to sleep. He just wanted to talk basketball, right? And we were about to play uh, Tim Thomas uh, in a teenage, no in a, in the Charlie Weber tournament in uh, Maryland. And Tim mm-hmm. Thomas was the number one player in the country at the time. And Cole was just in a room all night, like one o'clock in the morning, just pacing around my bed like, yo, Rip, you know, tomorrow I'ma kill this dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like I'm like, Tim Thomas, like, first of all, you, we don't even play the same position as him, right? right. But, but Tim played on the wing at that time too. Like he was surreal. At, at, at that time, right? Because he was mm-hmm. a 6'9", can handle the ball, ball mm-hmm. can play inside, outside. He was like, man, I'm going to kill this dude, man. He was like, after, after tomorrow, it ain't going to be no doubt in anybody's mind who the number one player in America is. Like, they, they mm. saying, I ain't the number one player? Watch, mm. Rip. Watch. After tomorrow night, I'm like, bro, go to sleep, man. <laughs> we, we played them early in the morning, man. I, like, let, let's talk about this pregame. But, oh, like, like, tonight, let's go to bed. So... Uh, from a mentality uh, uh, standpoint, man, dude, dude was different, man. He was definitely one, one of a kind. How did he do yes, in the game? Man. Was there bro, a doubt after the game? Bro, Matt, after that game, you can pull up every tabloid or every little scouting uh, report, and every last one of them had Kobe Bryant as the number one number player. Number one, in yeah. The he was no, after that, uh, yeah, I remember that. I, mean, I remember he, he, that. Uh, he came out, he might have had close to 50, right? I remember that, yeah. And we won. And we yeah. won. Yeah. So nah, mm. like bro was like like he was a he was a killer man. He was he was he was different, man. He was he was totally different. He I remember he he told us uh stories about your pops always had the video camera, so he had a bunch of footage y'all back then uh playing together. I oh. need that. He he got that McDonald's footage too. Tell your pops to send me some footage, man. I know y'all got all that footage. I, I know, you know, oh, my pops, you know, my pops is OG, man. Like, you know, like my pops was the only guy that I know that snuck his camera, well, brought his camera and dared somebody yeah. to tell him no at the ABCD <laughs> camp, right? Like, 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 he, like he didn't, like he didn't care and filmed everything, and he did the same thing at uh, the McDonald's All American game. And you got to know if you know Kobe, 
uh, and uh, Joe, uh, his father Joe Bryant. You know, they're a very, you know, uh, uh, secretive family. They don't let a lot of people mm -hmm. in, but mm -hmm. you know, they they loved me and my pop, and they allow you know him to bring in a the camera there. And we was just young kids, man, just yep, you know having fun. Ha having fun, having a good time. And like you said, Jack, I got Jack in there, I got Jermaine on there, and that was the one thing. Uh. With Kobe, he always wanted the tapes, right? Because by the time I got to the lead, I used to always mess around with like, yo, give me the jersey, man, sign the jersey, you know, for me. But that was the one thing I always had one up on him because I had all the tape, right? Yeah. And, I, and, 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 and I'd be like, yo, give me the jersey, sign it and give it to him. He like, nah, man, till you give me the tape, I ain't, I ain't signing shit for you, hey, man. That's funny I, as I hell. need every last one of them yeah, tapes. Yeah, he got all that. Rip anything. got all that, man. I know yeah. Rip got all that footage. Nah, so, yeah, so he, my, my, my pop got all the behind-the-scenes stuff where, you know, at the end of the day, we were just kids because that's what we were. We were, we were nobodies at the time. We were just trying to make a name for ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we wasn't from, you know, we're from right outside of Philadelphia. You know what I'm saying? So it's a big difference. Like, you know, we're from Pennsylvania, and it's, you know, it's probably similar to what it is in L.A., Matt. Like, you know, you got mm -hmm. people that's from L.A. that lives in L.A. proper, and then you got mm -hmm. people from the Valley. And mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're kids that's from outside the city of Philadelphia... You look that different. Yeah, people in the city don't really respect you, right? right. They, mm -hmm. they like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, they just suburb kids. Nah, bro, like, we grew up the same way, but we just ain't from the city. So right. we had to go there and earn our respect each and every day. So it wasn't like something was just given to us. Man, thank you for sharing those stories, man. We appreciate man, that. Obviously, yeah. rest in peace to Kobe, Gigi, Absolutely. and uh, everyone else lost in that, in, in that unfortunate situation. Let's transition into college because... You were one of the great college players of all time and kind of like the like the, the changing of the guard. Kyle, that, you know, you're, you're the run of your career, then, you know, maybe a handful of years after, I kind of felt like college basketball had lost its essence after that. Um, but you were uh, 1999 national champion. Uh, you guys just had a 20-year reunion uh, mm -hmm. for that team, correct? T talk to us about that. Uh, it, 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 it was a great experience for me because, like I said, like we talked about Cole, we used to always talk about college, but he was always talking about NBA. And I was like, man, I ain't ready for that. You know, so I ended up choosing uh, to go to UConn. And it was great for me because, one, that I got an opportunity to see big bro Ray Allen before me, right? So mm -hmm. when, when, when I got to the University of Connecticut, you know, I, you know, a lot of people see me, you know, coming off pin downs and coming off screens and stuff like that. But that wasn't my game in high school. That's, that, that wasn't who I was. And uh, when I first got there, Calhoun used to always tell me, like, hey, man, you, you're not a McDonald's All-American. You're just a Coastville All-American. Until you learn how to use your teammates and understand where your teammates are on the floor and where, you know, uh, uh, the point guard is going to distribute the ball, how to use guys as uh, coming off pin downs and things like that, you mm -hmm. will be a very simple player, right? So he forced me to go in there and watch Ray Allen and watch a whole lot of film on him, just understanding the concepts of coming off pin downs and things like that. But during that time, the Big East was crazy. I mean, it was mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, like, yeah, you had buddy. AI, you know, before I got there, you had AI in Georgetown. You had Kerry Kittles in Villanova. Villanova. You, had, mm -hmm. you had Ray Allen in Connecticut. You had John mm -hmm. Wallace at Syracuse. Syracuse. Like, mm -hmm. like, it was loaded. So at that time, it was like, in my opinion, the most physical conference, you know, in college basketball. And, you know, I always looked at it, the Big East playing, in, you know, playing on the biggest stage at Madison Square Garden. So I looked at all that, and I always told myself I never, if I never got an opportunity to play in the NBA, playing at the University of Connecticut would be playing, like, in, on a professional team because there was no professional teams in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. There was no professional, you know, yeah. football teams or anything like that. So everything was all about men's and women's basketball. So, you know, the one thing that I did was, you know, trust the process, trust Calhoun, trust, you know, what all the guys, you know, did before me, the Ray Allens, the Danielle Marshalls, you know, the Cliff Robsons, guys that did it before me, and trust that, you know, Calhoun would put me in the positions to get me to the next level. But, you know, I had a great group of guys. You know, I played with uh, Khaled El Amin, who was probably one of the mm -hmm. one of my favorite, you know, my people guy, that's my guy. And, and basketball players of of all time. You know, played with Ricky Moore, Kevin Freeman, and uh, Jake Vosco. Uh, but them guys, man, look, you know, that's when you know money didn't really, you know, it was no egos, right? You mm -hmm. know, money wasn't involved. It was like we was just kids, man. We was just like, you know. We was just all about the grind. Like, hey, you know what? We won. We didn't like to lose. We we won to win. And and that year was a very special year because the year before that, we went to the Elite Eight and we lost to a, a really good team 
uh, at North Carolina who had Vince mm. Carter, Antoine Jameson, mm. and Coda, yeah, yeah, yeah. you mm. know, and uh, they Williams. Mob. Yeah, they had a mob. Like, and we played them in North Carolina. And I thought about leaving after my sophomore year, which I'm happy I did because I, I wasn't ready for that. But uh, Calhoun convinced me to come back. And the one thing that he always told me is like, hey, Rip, if you come back to school for your junior year, you have an opportunity to be the Michael, Je- Michael Jordan of uh, college basketball. And I'm like, Michael Jordan of college basketball? Like, what you mean? He was like, bro, like, you know, you got an opportunity to come back and not, if you leave your sophomore year, you'll be a top 20 pick. If you come back your junior year, you'll be a, a lottery pick. You got an opportunity to win a national championship. You'll be fighting for, for a player of the, uh, of the year. Uh, and uh, you got an opportunity to be one of the best scorers to ever come through here. So after him him stroking my ego for like 30, 40 minutes. He, he, he I, foreseen that, though. He, said he foreseen yes. that, yeah. And all, yes. that shit came, and all that shit came true, though. All of all, it. All of it came true, man. And, <laughs> you know, it was crazy because Calhoun's a tough-ass coach, man. Like, yeah. you know, I, I had the, I don't know if you want to call it the luxury, but, you know, <laughs> I, I, I had the, a luxury of being around some tough ass head coaches, dudes that didn't, that didn't, you know, uh, allow you to take days off. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you had to come in, you had to be about, uh, about the grind. They would tell you, "Fuck you" to your face, and like you mm-hmm. ain't shit to your face. Like yeah. you know, what I mean, what no kiss ass? Like I ain't have kiss ass coaches. Like I had coaches that was like, "Hey, bro, like I'm gonna believe in you more than you believe in yourself, but I'm gonna push you to get right. you to where you want to mm-hmm. get to." And you know, yeah. I'm happy I listened to him because we won a national championship. And I got an opportunity to play in the NBA. That's that old school love, that old school tough love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You and Khalid Elamine. I played with him in the, in the, we both was rookies at the same time. We played in the rookie all-star game together. And that was my guy too. I, I, I really loved uh, playing with him. Uh, I, 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 I used to call him, um, I used to call him the five two point guard. Mm-hmm. Knowing he, he, he wasn't really five two though. He wasn't really five two. I used to always call. I used to always say he was five to call him five two. But tell me about your relationship with. with I can't even say his name. Khalid Elamine. Tell me about your relationship. He was tough, with him. man. He was tough. No, Khalid was a tough cookie, man. I mm-hmm. mean, mm-hmm. shouts out to Khalid, mm-hmm. man. People forget Khalid was Mr. Basketball in in uh, Minnesota. I mean, he was probably number one point guard in his class coming out that year. But when he came to Connecticut, man, he gave us a, a, a sense of confidence and a sense of cockiness all in the same sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because Calhoun had, you know, he was, you know, pretty much blinders on, you know, straightforward, you know, very structured, uh, very serious at all time. And Khalid was Khalid. He was silly. He was fun. Like, yeah. when, Coach, when Coach said, hey, you know what? It's picture day today. Everybody got to wear suits and ties. Khalid came in with a button-up T-shirt. I mean, a button-up shirt <laughs> with no tie and no, and, you know. So he, you know, he was the, he was the guy that came on the bus, you know, and yelled and screamed and was like, "Hey, Coach Calhoun, you ready or what?" You know, when Coach was very like, "Hey, man, everybody on the bus got to be quiet because you know you got to stay focused." But he was probably one of, you know, the toughest point guards I ever played with, and his confidence level was was crazy. Khalid can go one for 15, but he's at, in the last three minutes of the game, he still wanted to rock. And, mm-hmm. you know, you never looked at him in his eyes. Very similar to a guy that I played with, Chauncey Billups, that regardless yeah. how Chauncey shot the ball, when it came to the last couple minutes of the still game, he still you wanted him. He's, he, you, you, can, you, you can count on him. And Khalid always loved the, 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 big, the big moments. Uh, you know, we felt like we were the best backcourt in college basketball, like, we walked with that. Like, you know, it wasn't something that we we shied away from. Like, you know, you put the camera mm-hmm. in front of us, we're going to tell you, you know, mm-hmm. because we were always underdogs. Like, nobody really believed in us. Nobody believed that, you know, we gonna, we can win a national championship when Duke had Shane Battier, Elton Brand, Corey Maggette, you know, yeah. Trajan Langdon. You mm-hmm. know, they had four or five guys, you know, in, in the first round. So, you know, in our mind, it was against all odds, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, but Khalid was definitely one of the most confident players that I ever played with. Like, I loved him on and off the court, you know what I'm saying? I think he, you know, his, on, his off the court situation sometimes didn't help his on the court situation. Hey, real, hey, real. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, that's my guy. I got a crazy story. We in the rookie all-star game. Uh, in 2000, 2001, we in a rookie all-star game, right? So we all on the same floor. They got all the rookies on the same floor. So it's, and I think, I think the, t- the sophomores was on the same floor too. So it's, mm-hmm. just, it's my room, it's Khalid's room. We're next door to each other. L.O. is across from us. And next door to L.O. is um, Darius Miles. Mm-hmm. We didn't, ki- we didn't, 
popped all our doors open. We passing blunts through the hallway to each other. <laughs> with, with, with our doors open. <laughs> and, and look, and we all had no plans on even thinking about what we were doing, bro. We was an all-star. We were all happy to be there. We were all damn near, you know, de defied all kind of odds, bro. And I remember... I remember me and him being right next door, and I remember walking next door. We passed and blessed each other at All Star in the All Star NBA hotel, bro. I'm like, man, that was one of the best times of my life, bro. God damn. Uh, Khalid is Khalid. If you know Khalid, he, <laughs> hey, that was my he, boy. He is what it is. Like, like Jack, I can tell you a funny story, man. After we won the national championship, and this is before the social media era that, you know, nobody really knew or talked about, but we just won a national championship, right? So we're going to, uh, so so we're on campus and Khalid comes up to me and is like, hey, Rip, let's go to, to Hartford, right? To get some gear because that's where all the hip hop, you know, you get all your hip hop clothes and get fresh. He was like, yo, my man got a store there. You know, let's go down there and get some clothes. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, so we go to the store, get some gear, whatever, whatever, right? So we get back in the car. Now we on our way back to campus. So Khalid like, oh man, you know what, man, Rip, let's ride through the hood, you know what I'm saying? Get some love from, <laughs> from the people, right? So I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's just get back, let's get back to campus. He's like, nah, let's just ride through real quick. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. So we riding through the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody in the, in the neighborhood giving us love, whatever, whatever, high five, whatever, whatever. So we stopped by this little project, you know what I'm saying, over there, right? And a couple homies, you know, in the neighborhood, you know, knew K. And they was like, yo, what's up, man? Congratulations. You know, just give them love, right? Shake your hands, dapping up, whatever, whatever, right? So we're in the car, and one dude comes over, and he says, hey, K, uh, huh, man, you know what I'm saying? And, and reaches in the car and acts like he's giving him that, but then he pulls his hand back, right? And then the homie was like, hey, you know what? Just give it to him, man. Them dudes won a national championship, and I don't know what the hell is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just give it to him, whatever, whatever, right? So then K was like, nah, I'm cool, whatever, whatever. And the other homie's like, nah, give it to him. Boom. Gave him a high five, you know what I'm saying? And it was two dime bags of weed, right? <laughs> K, K takes it, right? <laughs> K takes it, right? Puts it in his pocket. Boom, right? So now we're in the car, right? So we sped off. I mean, we going 30 miles an hour. As soon as we hit the corner, mm -mm. bro, the sirens go off. Woo! Right? <laughs> police, police come out on foot, sprinting, running, stop them. They ran, they ran a stop sign and they've been speeding and whatever. I'm like, bro, we ain't been speeding. Like, what the hell going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Once I see police, I'm shook, right? So then uh, K, K like, oh, man, like, damn, like, you know what I mean? I got this on me. Like, like you know what I mean? We we college kids. At this time, you know, marijuana was a big thing back then. And like, like yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll take yes, your ass to jail. So the cop come out, right? So he like, he split his, one cop come, take me and put me in the cop car. They take him and put him in the cop car. I'm like, yo, what, what the hell's going on? So the cop car I'm in. The police is like, man, Rip, like, why, why are y'all here? And I'm like, bro, we just came here to get some clothes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we just had a cruise around the neighborhood. He's like, bro, you know, we've been having a sting operation on this project for the last four months. I'm wow. like, I'm like, what? So then I'm like, damn, he's like, y'all shouldn't be out here. Y'all shouldn't be out here. So now I'm looking through the police, uh, police, uh, and I'm in the back seat. I'm looking through the police window. So they pulled Khalid out the car first, but they separate us. And I know what pocket he put the dime bags in. And I'm yeah. like, like, bro, like, please don't go in the pocket, right? First thing they did, so they had some mean ass cameras, man. I don't know where the where the hell they got this camera at. But the first <laughs> place they checked was inside his sweatsuit pocket. He go in the sweatsuit pocket, boom, pulls it out. I don't see what was being said because I just see a whole lot of hands because I'm in there. Yeah. They put him in the car, they pull me out. They was like, what the hell you got in your pocket? I'm like, bro, I ain't got nothing. They pat me down, whatever, whatever. They check, they, they check the car, whatever, whatever. And then they 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 take him right to the police station. So I'm like, Ooh. yo, like, what's what's going on? You know what I mean? Because I'm acting dumb. I'm like, yo, what's going on? He's like, oh man, he had marijuana on him. He's going to jail. So I'm mm. like, well, well, like, yo, like, like, what, what what about me? They was like, oh, well, well, you off, like, but he's going to jail. And I'm like, bro, like, like, where we just won a national championship. Like, <laughs> like, like, y'all, y'all can't let us off. Like, and he like, he like, hell nah, like in a police, I mean, everybody in the neighborhood out, like, yo, let them kids go. Let them kids go. So, 
you know, I'm an hour from campus, man. And I'm like, yo, all right, man, can you just give me the key so I can drive back to the, to, to, to the campus? They like, hell no, nah, but we can give you a ride to the police station. I said, you know what? I'll walk back to campus, man. And I walked, <laughs> I walked about a mile when somebody came and get picked up, you know, this is before the cell phone era. Somebody yeah. gave me a ride back to campus. So that was just a crazy situation because Khalid was going to leave school his sophomore year. That was the same year that I left. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But he was going to leave that year, but uh, he ended up coming back for his junior year. Damn. Because That's of that crazy. situation. That's yeah. crazy. So 1999, you're the seventh pick of the Washington Wizards. Uh, talk to us about that experience. That was a hell of a draft class, man. That was, well, that was uh, Elton Brand, uh, Baron Davis, Steve Francis, L.O., uh, Ginobili was a second-round pick, Jerry Terry. Ron. Ron, yeah, Sean Marion. Ginobili. Yeah, it was That mean. was a hell of a, yeah, Karolinko. Man, listen, that, that draft year was, was ridiculous. Crazy. I mean, it was crazy. And, you know, I can remember especially uh, the night before the draft and my man B.D., B.D., he came in my room and he was like, yo, man, you're going to the, to, to, to the Wizards. I'm like, how you know? He was like, oh, man, my agent told some shit. He, yo, he, he, was like, man, he think he know yo, everything. He, yo, man, he, he was like, he, he was like, man, I know where, you know, I'm going to Charlotte. Steve France is going to get, you know, drafted by Vancouver. Like, like, I'm like, bro, how you know? He's like, my agent told me. I said, man, you, you got to be kidding me. I started looking at my agent wrong, uh, crazy, because after the draft, I ended up firing my agent because of the information that Bear, that Barry Davis had in my, <laughs> and my agent didn't have at, at the time. So I was thinking, like, man, why don't you know this, man? Like, how, right, how is someone, how's he coming to tell, tell, tell me that? But, oh, uh, my that, God. That, that class was mean, man. I mean, if you look at the guys that we had in there, you talk about Elton Brand, who, has a, who had a great career. Steve Francis, who was, like, mm. all world mm. at the time. Mm. No, Took the world no, by storm. Oh, Steve, my Steve goodness. Francis to the league by storm. A, a problem. Yes, he did. And, that, and that's mm-hmm. a guy that we don't talk about a lot. Man, but Steve what? Francis was Took a the problem. the league over. Nobody wanted to guard him. Nobody wanted mm-hmm. to. Nobody. nobody. Yo, they, he, you know, they had that one thing called one shake, two shake, three shake in Houston. Yeah. Where they had a little isolation with him and Coutinho, Coutinho and uh, Mucci Norris. Like, you didn't want to get yeah. caught, on that, caught on that blender. But BD and, you know, LO and, you know, we had, you know, Ron Ron and. Uh, I mean, you got to think about it. Ginobili was a second round pick. Late second round pick. Like, which was crazy. But uh, you know, we 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 had one of the best class in my in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Who were some of your vets uh, with the Wizards that year? Oh man, my man. You know, my vet was uh, Rod Strickland. Man, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, OG Rod. Yeah, oh, it, hey, Strick. Strick was my dude, man. Like he he took me underneath his wing, man. Like like an OG. Mm-hmm. Should, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, right. he gave me and Leron Prophet was uh, the rooks at the time. And he made sure we were straight. You know, he'd give us his car. You know what I'm saying? If, you know, we go out, everything was on him until mm-hmm. one day Leron Prophet put diesel fuel in his uh, Mercedes oh, Benz. Oh, my and, God. And, she, and, and Strick was pissed off. And, 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 and <laughs> Prophet didn't know. Cause he you know, we kids from the neighborhood. We didn't know what type of gas to put in a Mercedes. So Prophet put diesel fuel, fuel in there. <laughs> so, so, oh, so, my so, God. So, so Strick, you, Strick was pissed off at him. But Strick was my guy because the thing about it, and, you, and both of you guys know this, once you first come to lead, especially when you come on a, a veteran team, you know, they expect you to just fall in line when you get there, yeah. right? They don't expect mm-hmm. you to be an alpha in the locker room. You can't go into a veteran locker room and say, no. all right, you know what? I'm mm-hmm. going out there and play my game, the same game that I was playing in college. Like, like no, like, like they didn't give a goddamn I won a national championship. They was like, fuck that national championship shit. That right. shit don't mean right. nothing here. You know what I'm saying? So it was guys on the team that would be like, hey, man, you know, Rip, you out there, you know, shooting the ball too much. And... You know, uh, I took a page out of my man Kobe Bryant because before I, you know, announced that I was going to leave, me and him would talk on the phone, and I say, "Hey, give me one piece of advice that helped you when you when you came to the NBA." He was like, "Rip, when you come, you hit first. I don't give a fuck mm-hmm. who on your team." He was like, "Man, you come in if if your game is to score, you go out there and fucking score." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like because if you if you come in and you start trying to fall in line and you start just you know what I mean just going out there and just being a regular role player, you're gonna be a role player your whole entire career. So exactly. I was like, I was like, damn, all right, cool. So my Ooh, mentality was shit. coming in like, all right, you know what, shit, I've been a scorer my whole entire life. I'm coming out there and, and putting that ball up. 
So a couple mm-hmm. dudes would get pissed off on the team. Man, why is he shooting? Don't you know he? You can't shoot the ball, whatever, whatever. So one time I, I was like, man, fuck it. Then I ain't gonna shoot this one game. So I come in the game. Strick passed me the ball and I passed it back to him. So after the, and at halftime, he came to me. He's like, Rip, shoot the fucking ball. I said, Strick, there's some dudes on the team that you know told me. You know, sneak dissing, fall in line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, 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 you can't shoot, right? So he was like, "Look, Rip, tell them motherfuckers. You know, if they got a problem with you shooting, come holler at me." Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. no, strict. Say no more, bro. You know what I'm saying? I said, okay. to, I said to the team, I said, "Yo, if anybody got a problem with me shooting the ball, holler talk at to my, my big, I, talk to my I, big little homie back here." I, yeah, I, 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 holler at big bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> haven't had a problem. Ha- haven't had a problem uh, since. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. So that that's my dude right there. Strick always said, man, he was like, Rip, how the hell am I gonna get assists if you always passing the ball? You know. So yeah, that was yeah. my dude that really took me under my wing and really showed me the way. Tell me your rookie year. Who was the one matchup? <clears throat> the guy that you were like in awe and that actually busted your ass. Mm-hmm. Oh, that bust. That I was at all at first. Yeah, oh, like damn, man. I'm finally playing so and so, and they just went to work. Oh my goodness. Uh. I would have to say Allen Houston, man. Mm, forget how yeah. cold Allen Houston was, man. <laughs> man, let's see. Smooth right. as can be, too. Hey, Allen Houston was a problem, man. You know what I'm saying? And especially the, you know, when he was in when he was in New York, when they had him and Latrell Spreeway Spreewell mm, yeah. on the wing. Yeah. Because mm, yeah. you know, you know, when you got both two when you got two elite scores on the wing, you can't hide. Like you can't, you, <laughs> Hell nah. you can't hide because right. uh-uh. you know at certain games yeah, you can yeah. go in and be like, all right, you know what? I'm going against, you know, all right, uh, Miami, and I got to guard. You know, I'm going against D Wade, but you know, I can, you know, Miami didn't have two elite scores. You know, what I'm saying they had they had uh, D Wade, and then they had Pose, but Pose was in there to guard the the other team's best player, right? Yeah, so, exactly. So so you can take you can on on, on the defense end you can take plays off because. You ain't got to worry about this dude just coming yeah, at you getting all the, ball the time. Every time. You know, so so when playing against the Knicks, you had Spree and you got Allen. And Pinky they had this, oh, they had a play where it was called turn two, remember turn three, mm-hmm. right? Where yeah, them dudes wouldn't do nothing but, but put you on the block. So dumb dudes, man, like my first year, either Allen Houston had 14 points in the first quarter or I had two fouls in the first two minutes and I was sitting for the rest of the quarter. <laughs> so that dude right there, man, I, I, I couldn't guard him because I couldn't speed him up. And if anybody that knows Allen Houston, he doesn't talk yeah. on the floor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't speed him up. He's playing at his own pace. You can't talk trash and get him out of his game. And that dude used to murder me night in and night out every time. That's funny as hell. I love it. Hey, you um, you uh, you averaged nine points your rookie year. Then you bounced from nine to eighteen uh, your, your your second year. What was that process like? It was cool, man. It was fun because one first year was hard because you come from a winning situation in in, in UConn and you're playing all the minutes and the, and the offense is pretty much based around you. The second year I came in, I'm like, all right, you know what, Rip? You know we're still young. You know I'm still playing. Uh, uh, I think at the time. I think Mitch Richmond was still there at the time mm-hmm. because I was playing behind Mitch and Mitch just signed a big deal, so I had to fall in line, you know. Right. Mitch is a Hall of Famer. Like I, you know, ain't no, I can't beat, you know, at that time I wasn't gonna beat him out at that position. But right. uh that year guys got hurt. And you know, one thing about playing on a bad team, right? If you're a young guy, you're gonna get a lot of minutes in the second half of the season. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> a lot of minutes. Right? Like you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of minutes. So the second half of the season, even though we wasn't looking, you know, we weren't a team that wasn't going to make the playoffs, they were playing all the young guys. So me, LeBron Profit, Calvin Booth, they were starting to play us more. You know, I went from playing, you know, only like 10, 11 minutes a game to now playing 30 minutes a game. And once you once you do that with me, I ain't never looking back, bro. Like, like, right. like I, ain't, I ain't taking my foot off, foot off the gas. And I, right. and I think in that second half of, of my second year, I probably, I think I averaged like close to like 30-something points a game, so my scoring average just shot up, you know, mm. and that's when I was like, "Yo, I'm here, man. I'm, I'm ready. Right. Like, I don't need to take no backseat to to nobody. Mm. You know, I just Fuck need, that. I just need, a, I just need an opportunity, and and that was my opportunity there in Washington, especially going into my my uh, after my first year. Mm. So you have a, you know, obviously make your mark. You feel like you've arrived your second year, your third year. MJ comes back. 
Mm -hmm. tell, tell me about him coming back first and foremost, and then the second part of the question is, do you feel like that stunted, where you, obviously your process and your growth at the time? Oh, uh, man, MJ, man, that was awesome for my career. You know, I, I always used to hear a lot of people talk about, okay, MJ coming back to a young, young, uh, a young team, and it's going to stun a lot of their guards, you know, growth. Because at the time, you know, we, it was me, uh, LeRon Prophet, and it was a guy, Courtney Alexander, who was, man, he was, a, he was a problem game. too. He was a guy that game. played on the wing with me that, you know, we both, that during that second half of the year in Washington, after my second year, we both averaged, you know, close to 30 points a game, you know. Yeah, he was balling. But, but when MJ came, man, it was it was the goat, man. That's 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 goat status, man. As a two guard coming up, and Mike, you know, being your idol growing up, and now you got an opportunity to lock it up with him and and mm -hmm. and learn and, and and get as much information off of him as possible. Because even my second year, he used to come down and practice with us all the time, right? But he didn't, you know, every now and then he'd come in and, you know, work out with us. Kind of similar to what he did with y'all when you was on the Bobcat, Jack. Yeah, you know, he'd right. come down and work out with us. And me and Prof used to play with him all the time, and we used to talk trash to MJ all the time. But it was only certain things that I would say. And, you know, Prof would sometimes, you know, say a little <laughs> bit of extra stuff that I wouldn't yeah. just, I wouldn't go there. And I, and I remember one time we were playing in practice, right? And Prof, you know, might have, hit a shot on MJ, and he was like, running down court, yeah, you can't guard me with them old-ass knees. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. Stop. Time out. Time out. I was like, oh, nah. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't say that to the GOAT. MJ was heated. I mean, he was heated to the point that when I went to my exit meeting, uh, uh, Cause you know he was he was the president at the time. I went yeah. into my exit meeting. He was like, oh, "Okay, Rip, you know your man, your buddy, you know what I'm saying?" Because he ended up trading prof that 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 uh, <laughs> summer. He was like, "Oh, your man." He was like, "Oh yeah, he ain't going. He 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 out of here." He said, "But you gonna oh, be there by you you gonna be there by yourself." You know what I'm saying? And you ain't going to have your buddy to, to co-sign. And, you know, you're going to be on the island by yourself. I like, look, He was M, still I, mad. He was, was still like, mad. I was like, M, I don't want no problems, bro. I don't <laughs> want no problems at all. I'm your teammate, man. But, uh, yeah, when, yeah. but when he came I know, to, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> we Jack, got you into know, a, right? He traded my ass, too. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> right, right, right after we got into it. <laughs> you got to be careful. You got to be careful. But... When MJ came, man, I, I just thought it was a, a blessing, and and uh, for for me as a basketball player, you know, because I was able to learn so much off of him. Mm, uh, you know, it took it took my game to a, a whole new other level, especially even mm -hmm. playing with him. Because you got to remember, when you're playing with Michael Jordan, all the focus is going to be on Michael Jordan. I mean, yes, traveling sir. with MJ is like traveling with the Beatles back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when playing with him, the one thing that I learned with playing with Mike was, you remember, you know, back in the day, they used to call it floppy, right? You know, when two guys mm -hmm. come down come and the two down, bigs yeah. come down and we run them off screens. So I was like, man, screw my bigs. I'm just going to run off MJ. Why? Because every time I run off MJ, you know what I'm saying, my man going to go to him and his man ain't going to yeah. leave him, right? Yeah. So I would get wide open every time. And MJ would come to me after the game and be like, hey, Rip, I see what you're doing out there. I see, I, I, I see, I, I, I see what you're doing out there. I'm like, yeah, what am I, what am I, what am I supposed to do, man? Like, shit, you the GOAT. Like, you know, so he was, he was very, he was very helpful for, for, for my career when, uh, when I was in Washington. And another crazy story is that we just talked about Allen Houston, right? So Allen Houston was killing me. Like, like I said, he killed me in my first two years, right? So when MJ came, third year, now I feel like I'm growing up. You know what I mean? I grew some hair on my chest. Like, I've been through the war and the battles a little bit. So, you know, and I got big bro. Like, I got the bully in the room, right? So, yeah. you know, I, I'm a little bit more confident. So we playing against New York. We playing against New York and Washington. And first half, I go out and I give Allen Houston 30 in the first mm -hmm. half. Right? Mm. So, like, like, I'm geeked. I'm like, okay, for all the times this motherfucker been killing me and getting me in foul trouble, I'm in, I'm in his ass right now. Right? You know what I mean? So, we, we in there at halftime. You know, we talking. Coach talks, does a speech. MJ come up to me. He was like, hey, man. Hey, young fella. You know, you had a, you had a great half. You know? But... Big bro gonna take over the second half, so don't worry about it. <laughs> wow. I, I got you. Big, big bro gonna take over the second half, right? 
That's at crazy. The, at the end of the game, man, in that second half, I only had two shots in the second wow, half. Wow. I had 30. I think I might have ended with like 32. You know what I'm damn. saying? I was like, damn. Yeah. I was so at the end of the game. I was like, damn, man, this was my perfect opportunity to, to kill this dude. This dude killed me my first two years. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now I got you on my side. He was like, hey, man, don't worry about it, man. You'll get another opportunity at that. But as a young kid, you don't think that you're gonna get another opportunity. That was your time. Time that to shine. That was your moment. But, but but Big Bro was like, he tapped me on the shoulder. And was like, hey, man, you you did enough. I was like, in my mind, I was like, hell nah. But he was like, you know, that the second half he took over. He might have scored. 25 or 26 in the second half, and we end up winning the game. But that that that, all, that story always sticks to me because that was my opportunity to go out and get 50. That's funny as hell, especially on someone that's been lighting your ass up. Lighting my ass up, yes. 2002, you traded uh, to Detroit for Stackhouse, six-player trade. And that summer, they also uh, signed Chauncey Billups. So being able to be, be paired with Chauncey, was kind of the beginning of something special there. Talk to us about that. Shout out Big Shot. Oh, Big man. Shot. Yeah, shout out Big Shot. You know what? When I was in uh, Washington, before, when, right when I got traded, uh, you know, I was real close with uh, Ty Lue, right? Ty Lue was my guy, right? So T. Lue already had a relationship with Chauncey, and he, you know, he mm -hmm. prepped me before I went out to Detroit, and he was like, hey, man, you really going to like Chauncey, man. He, he He's very similar to myself, really down to earth, real cool dude. You know, real thorough brother, man. No ego, you know what I mean? Ain't on no, no bullshit. Ego. You know what I mean? Because, you know, playing in this league, you know, you got a lot of players you that's on know. that bullshit, man. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, they always, you know, sneak dissing, hating, yeah. <laughs> everything else that comes with, you know, being a professional athlete. But he was like, nah, you going to love him. He like, he the mayor. Like, he the best dude, dude he ever. Real they, he really as they come. Oh, my goodness. So I was like, bet. So uh, first, when I got traded to Detroit, I was like, you know, the first thing I asked my my agent, I was like, who did I get traded for? And he was like, Jerry Stackhouse. I was like, oh, snap. Like, Stack? Like, shit, Stack was just the NBA's lead scorer. Like, mm -hmm. like they like Detroit gave up on him. Like, like I, I I mean, like, I'm I'm still a young pup, still trying to figure it out. Like, I'm still trying to figure out my game, still trying to make a name for myself. So when they traded for for a stack, I was like, damn, they must really want you, Rip. Like, you know, go back to what Cove told me. As, and, 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 mm -hmm. You know, when I first got to the league. You know, come in, hit first, hit man. First. Like, come in there and just be you. You know what I mean? Don't change, change your play. Don't change the way you play. And then I reached out to Chauncey. Me and him started talking. You know what I'm saying? Which was great. We got on, on the same page uh, right from the jump. He was, we, we, he was very similar to myself. And then Ben Wallace, he already set the foundation, right? Like, mm -hmm. like he already set the foundation on what we was about. Hard nose, grit, grind, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we was going to come to work each and every day, you know? And I was like, damn, we got some real-ass dudes, like real mm -hmm. dudes, yeah, you know what I'm saying, on one team. You know, that, yeah. that, that, doesn't, that, that, that don't always happen. You know, you, no. know, you might have one guy that you fuck with or two guys mm -hmm. you fuck with on a team, but when the whole team is about that, those I are mean, those special yeah. teams. Them are the special ones. Yes. Yeah, so that getting getting the opportunity to go there, you know, you already had guys on that team that that was committed to winning, and it wasn't about them. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. about the team. Like, okay, you know, I'm, you know, big. Uh, our big thing was I. I am my brother's keeper. Like, you know, like, uh, that's my bro, you know what I'm saying? I love you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to have your back through thick and thin, and you're going to have mine. So, you know, it was just, it was it was something very special that uh, Joe Dumars put together with that team, you know, and, and then adding Rashid. Mm, and mm, once, mm. Once, once, once Rashid came, it was game over. I mean, mm -hmm. it was... It was nothing that you can do. I mean, I, like, I didn't give a damn who you was because during that time, during that era, it was like, shit, anytime you played against the Lakers, it was always like, damn, man, got to go against, you know, Shaq's big ass in there. And then Kobe, the only thing he want to do is overplay everything and force you in there to Shaq, Shaq because mm -hmm. they got, he, you know, that's his security blanket so he can overplay mm -hmm. you on everything to funnel you into the big fella. And then where the and hell you Shaq, go? And then Shaq will put you on your ass, too, if you start doing too well. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. For real. So, so that team was ridiculous. But once she came, and I can remember uh, throwing the the ball to him in the post, and I cut off of him, and he passed me the ball, and I laid it up. And at the time, you know, 
in my opinion, I think <laughs> she, you know, top three power forward in the game at that time. But by, by far, by far, you, by you far. You know what I'm saying? And by you far. and you had the best. You had the best yes. power forward yeah. game. Yeah. You had, you yeah. know, you had C Webb, you had McDice, yeah. you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You had Dirk Nowitzki, mm-hmm. you had KG, KG. you yeah. had Tim Duncan. Like, Ooh. like, come on, Rashid man. She like, was a killer inside oh. out. Oh. Inside out. Man, I'm taking she in the boy. foxhole all day long. Yes, sir. And I and I threw the ball to him because me and Charles used to always say to Joe, like, hey, you know what, we need somebody. You know, we got the perimeter on lock. You know, I mean, that was just our mentality at the time. You know what I'm saying? But we need a big that can force a double team. You know what I'm saying? Because every time we come off the, you know, Chauncey coming off the pick and roll, teams will blitz him. When I come off a pin down, teams going to blitz me. Blitz right? Yeah, yeah. Coming off she, you can't blitz. You can't trap. Because if you, you do, do that, that. she mm-hmm. going to make your ass pay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, you know, she was a guy that forced the double team for us, right? We needed somebody to force the double team. So when I threw the ball into him and I cut off him, he gave me the ball back. I'm like, shit, like, you can score on this dude any time. Mm-hmm. Next play, I come down, I throw it to him again. He said, Rip, do the same shit, man. Run off of me again. Boom, he gives it to me again. And right then and there, I said, I said to myself, oh, bro, we're going to win a championship. Because mm-hmm. this guy right now can score on unselfish. anybody, right? And he's so unselfish mm-hmm. that he's mm-hmm. saying, all right, you know what? Fuck my individual shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's all about the team. I'm going to do with everything possible for us to get, get this team over the hump. And, bro, he's still to this day... One of the most unselfish and one of my favorite teammates of all time. That's hey, bro, you got you, you got you got to think about it though. Y'all had point guard. Y'all had one of the best, one of the most clutch, solid point guards ever played in NBA. Chance Billings. At two guard, you at two guard, one of the best two guards. You was best a motherfucker, two guard. bro. Man, you was a coming out of them picks, bro. Man, well, hold on, problem. he would grab your motherfucking arm, scratch you with his nails, come off the motherfucking pin down, <laughs> hit it, elbow you. Yo, <laughs> this motherfucker Miller. was so he was so for how skinny he was so physical and like a little fucking fierce ass <laughs> dog when you would touch him. They, and then you had on top of that you had to chase his ass around big ass picks around he was Ben Wallace, around he Rasheed was Wallace, around. Jay Jason Maxiel, like you had big ass screen setters too. It was a motherfucker to guard Rip, man. Elder, Elder, <laughs> Elder Campbell, all, all them big motherfuckers. Then you had mm-hmm. Sheed at the four. You mm-hmm. had uh, you had Sheed at the four, yeah. one of the best power fours ever. You had Young Tayshawn. Tayshawn. Man, it was a problem. Six, six, ten, three guard that can play all three positions, all four positions, can play pass, can everybody. shoot, can do all. Then you finish with Ben Wallace, defensive player. Of the league. Y'all had, y'all had the perfect one, two, three, four, five in the league. Like that's one of the best lineups as a starting five ever in the NBA, bro. Yo, man, I'm telling you, like the, that that lineup was great. Even Tayshawn, he, you know, it was a lot of sacrifices that that, that Tayshawn, you mm-hmm. know, did from an offensive standpoint. We all know how great he was defensively. But offensively, man, he could average score. twenty. He could average no twenty question. in his lead if he wanted to. Take it, take, you know what take I'm saying? The score. But that's what that that that's not what our team, you know, needed. Uh, right. So me running around like crazy, man. Like I couldn't, you know, get into a physical grudge match with y'all dudes. Like y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all dudes, y'all dudes would eat me up. Like you know what I'm saying? You know, Jack No playing against Ron Artest, yeah. motherfucker, yeah. elbow you, grab you, and everything. So my error was like, and it's similar to you guys was, you had to hit first. Like if, if if you allow if you allow the defense to hit you first, then shit they they're gonna be able to throw me around like a puppy. So mm-hmm. I had to use my God given gift, and that was my endurance and my speed. So I yes, had to run Lord. run off screens. I would grab the shit out of y'all, like Matt said. Mm-hmm. I would put my I would put my nails in you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I would I, I wouldn't cut yeah. my nails on purpose. Yeah, just so. that's a long <laughs> ass for real, bro. And I'm light skinned, so this shit show up all up all <laughs> down my arm. I'm like, damn. So, <laughs> cut them on so just so just think about it. I got somebody like yeah. Matt and all these dudes trying to beat me up from a physical bully you. standpoint, yeah, God, right? That was our only so, hope was to bully you. So if you're trying to bully me, right, and I'm putting my nails in you, the first thing you're going to do is say, man, this dude scratched me. Like, man, I'm yeah. not going to get too close to him. You know what I'm saying? So right then and there, yeah. I felt like, oh, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Then I will come off the screen, then I will bump you. I hit you with a cheap shot. I hit you, mm-hmm. I hit you with an yeah. elbow here yeah. and there. Yeah. And then by the yeah. time you try to yeah. get me back, you know, I try to play in space. I never try to play in a crowd. Because if I play in a the crowd, then you're able to grab, you're able to hold, you're able to hit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're able to get your little cheap shots. But if I hit you, you know, and, and run, and now you hit me in a crowd, referee going to call a foul every time. Every That's time. how you baited Ron. That's how you baited Ron. I got him in that playoff series, too. <laughs> <laughs> I got his ass. 
That's Absolutely. how you dated him. Yeah, nah, because listen, during that series <laughs> right there, that was a tough series, man. You know what I'm saying? That year, man, y'all y'all had a whew, man, I don't even want to talk, I don't even want to talk about y'all team. Y'all team was the shit. And going down the stretch of that game, I knew I was gonna bait him. I knew it. Mm-hmm. I, I just knew it because I played against Ron. You know what I mean? We pl- I had battles with him when he was at St. John's. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I knew how physical he was, and I knew that if I hit him with a cheap shot, Ron ain't going to let gonna you react. get away with it. He ain't going to react. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he ain't going to let you get away with it. He going to get you back. So, you know, I, I watched his documentary, and he was like, yeah, nobody seen when he got me. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, was try, I was trying to do anything to win. You yes. know, like, like I'm doing whatever I got to do to Hell win. Yeah. And I remember when he hit me with that elbow, he ain't even hit me hard. I just fell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I just laid on the ground like I got shot. And I remember Jermaine <laughs> O'Neal was just yelling and screaming like, Ron, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And he was trying to explain to y'all that he didn't really hit me that hard. But he really didn't hit me that hard. But I just yeah. got away with it at the time. <laughs> hey, hey, Rip, a lot of people don't know, like, okay, people don't know how our relationship, how cool we is. But even, even to go back, like, that, that happened the year before I got there with you and Ron. And yep. I walked into uh, the rabbit with y'all. And people don't understand, like, those two teams were so talented and, 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 and were so at each other. When all that happened the day of the brawl, bro, as close as me and you are, all that went out the window for about five seconds. Yeah, facts, facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all, squ- y'all squared was- up. Facts. Yeah, we squ- like, y'all squared let me, up. Let me, let me tell you, bro. <laughs> yeah. the, shit, the shit was so crazy that when I watched it, I'm like, God damn, it was me and Rip about to fight. Man, that's my partner. No doubt, no doubt, right, no. But, 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 but we was all in the moment. We was all riding for our guys, but we ain't never talked about it. But I was telling people how different basketball was then and now. Like, if you was on a team, and, and if you was in that era where you was uh, on a Pacers team or on a Pistons team, that rivalry was deeper than basketball, bro. Oh, man, it's like Stack said, that, that, that was crazy. And me and Stack was like, like this. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like 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 this. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And that Indiana Pacer team was ridiculous, man, because y'all had everything. Y'all was very similar to us. Y'all had dogs. Very similar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Dogs. Like you, you, you need dogs in the fox and you need pit bulls, you know yeah. what I'm saying, during that era to win a that to win a uh, NBA championship. And yep. if you look at the match the matchups, like the matchups, like like we we matched Everywhere. Up. We matched up well. It wasn't it wasn't like oh, okay, you know what? All right. Uh, at the power forward, uh, we're going to win that matchup. Or the, at the big or at the guard nah. or whatever, whatever. Hell no. Nah. Jamal Tilly was, was, was a problem. You know what I mean? Steven Jackson, a problem. You know, uh, Al Harrington, uh, Ron yep. Artest, like, yep. like Jermaine O'Neal, like, mm, bro, mm, like, mm. Like, Jeff like, listen, Foster. We had Reggie still, too. Reggie, too. Like, that was like, <laughs> bro, like, how do you put that team together? And we knew yeah. it, though. Like, on our squad, we knew it. We knew it. And when Jack first got there, you know, me and Jack is homies. The first thing he'd do is get on TV and talking about, oh, you know what? Detroit, yo, they 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 were the beast in the East for the last couple years. It's, it's a new sheriff in town. It's us. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, okay. They brought me into it. Uh, they brought uh, me yeah. into it. Uh, he, like, was okay. his, hey. like, he was on like, okay, his, Jack. he was, he was on his pock shit. He inherited oh, the beef. Hey, man, he came on his pock shit. I'm like, damn, he ain't even got here yet, and he already talking trash. I'm like, okay, so the, yeah, the, the yeah. rival right there, you know what I'm saying, is, is, is starting to begin where now, you know, you're looking at two teams when we match up that we don't even like each other. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like we don't even like, like, even though, like I said, like Jack said, we homies, we best friends, we love each other. You feel what I'm saying? Anything, like, if we're off the court and we in a dog fight and Jack fighting, we all fighting. We you all, feel yeah, what I'm exactly, saying? exactly. But, but during that time, it was so much built up into this because you got to understand, we want to get back to the promise hand. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Indiana already yeah. feel like the group of guys that they had in their, on their team right now, on that, during that time, they felt like they were mm-hmm. better than us. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it was like a thing was like, oh, okay, it's all about, you know, who wanted more. You know what I'm saying? Who wanted more? Like, like, yeah. like, 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 like hey, it, it, like, screw basketball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know what you run. We know what you run. You know that what I'm saying? That shit was dangerous. That shit like, was dangerous. <laughs> like, 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 who going to outwill the other team? It was all about your will, you know? Yeah. So that's what I love about that matchup. And during that brawl, like, I tell people, you know, I never told Jack, I never told Jack this, but, 
y'all was kicking our ass that game. Like, like on our home court. <laughs> like, like we, our, our team ain't never been handled like that. We, we were the bully. That's how we felt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any team that we yeah. went against, like it was times we'd get into the fourth quarter and be down 15 and we'd look at each other and be like, all right, y'all ready to turn, on, turn it on? Y'all ready to turn on the switch? And she'd yeah. be like, all right, let's do it. And we'll still win by 10. But playing against Indiana, man, nah, hell nah, man. They had dogs, man. They had dogs that on was, that team. That was, but that, that was our biggest game. Like, we had beat everybody. And, and that was our only game. We were like, hey, we beat everybody. But this is the Eastern Conference champs, Detroit. We ain't played them yet. And that was like our biggest game. We, we, we had put so much into that game and emotion was so high. And you don't even know this, Rip. At the end of the game, we shooting the free throw, right? I'm shooting. I'm at the free throw line. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamal, I, I, I make the free throw and I go back to give Jamal and Ron uh, five for making the free throw. Jamal tells Ron, you can get your foul back, some for, some foul that Ben put on Ron in the Eastern Conference foul. Remember, I that told was, you I wasn't on the team yet. I told you he don't forget nothing. <laughs> I, I wasn't on the team yet. Yes, yes. And he told him to get his foul back. And if you, if you remember, I was guarding Ben. I let Ben lay it up, and Ron came from out of nowhere and fouled him. And that's how all that shit started, bro. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And Ben, and ben even said it, because it's crazy, because on our side, you know what I mean, Ben went to the referee. Uh, a couple plays before that, and he said to the referee, and told the referee, hey, man, look, bro, Ron out here being dirty, hit me with and a ben cheap shot. And Ben had just lost his brother, too. Yes, he was like, hit me hit me with a cheap shot. He said, if if he if he hits me again, you know what I'm saying, if y'all ain't going to do something about it, mm. I'm going to do something about it. And, and, then that's when, and, that's, and that's when Ron came over there and, and hit him again, and he was already, like I said, he was already on tilt, and that's on when tilt. everything went crazy. Yo, Big man, man. I, I got I to say this last thing about that, though, Rip, and I want to see what you say. How hard did Ben push Ron in his face, bro? Oh, my goodness. Listen, man. I, I Listen, I know, how, I know how strong Ben is. I see, I see him every day. You know what I'm saying? And ben is not the dude to be messing with. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> on another thing. note, Ron Artest Ron ain't, ain't a person yeah, ain't either. to Same be thing. messing with. You got these two, you know what I mean? Ooh, these two, alphas. these two rock, these two rock mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I know what, it takes a lot to get Ben pissed off. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, it, and, and Ben come from, you know, you know his brothers. Like he, he, one of the younger brothers. Like he, he, he grew up and fights every every day. Just mm -hmm. you know, from the standpoint of mom putting food out on the table, and you know, you the little brother. Sometimes you don't get the, the big piece of chicken. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So 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 Ben from that air. So yeah. when he hit Ron like that, I was like, oh snap. Man. It's, about to, it's about to go down. I thought he almost broke his neck, but that just Me lets too, you know. Bro. That just lets you know how strong Ron Ron is. Exactly. That shit was crazy, unbelievable. I, I love to see like you know the core pieces of, of that brawl sit down and talk. Maybe have it on the show. But I, I think it would be dope to you know to get Sheed and, and, and Rip to talk about it more, and then and then Ben, and then get you and and Ron and. J.O. to just sit and talk. That'd be I, dope. I, 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 no, I guarantee there's never been, you know, like Rip just said, I just said something to Jack. I ain't never told him. You said the same thing. There's so much unspoken shit in one of the biggest pivotal moments in NBA history. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was one of the biggest, obviously the biggest brawl in NBA history. Facts. You know, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of rules were made because of that Facts. brawl. You know what I mean? So I think for everyone to sit down and talk. Rip got on maced. Show, Don't you know Rip got maced? Man, dude, it was, it was a lot going on that time, man. It was, I thought I broke my wrist because... You know, it was a time when, when everybody was running to the crowd. My whole yeah. thing is defend my brother. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I don't know where, I, like, I don't know where Ron is running to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't, yeah. I don't know anything because there's so much going on at that time. You know what I'm saying? Even Ben, he thought, okay, Ron is coming around that way to come yeah. and get him. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> at the time, I remember I was on the score table and I'm running to try to jump in there and Eldon Campbell come and grab me by yeah. my ankle, and I just remember falling on that cement, and I thought I broke uh, my wrist, you know what man. I'm saying, falling off the score table at that time. But, you know, it was it was a crazy time, man. You know, they, you know, the league definitely tried to clean up the game after that. Yeah. You know, it was, it was definitely something that, you know, both of us wish we have never experienced, you know, For in sure. our lifetime. You know, but like I said, it was two teams, you know, you, it's things you do to try to win a world championship, man. Like, right. like the game was different, <laughs> like Jack said. Even though we were best friends, it during that matter. moment, all matter. bets is off. We ain't talking. Yeah. We ain't having no yes. conversation about it. 
I ain't, uh, I, I ain't calling Jack and saying, Jack, what the hell was you thinking? Like, <laughs> like, like, like shit. Like, you know, like we trying to win a championship and we're going to do anything Word. possible to try yeah. to get the edge. Mm, that's crazy. Let's take a backtrack a little bit, though. Uh, you know, we obviously talked about your team, how you guys are perfectly constructed. You guys run into a, a, a great Laker team where many teams didn't give you a shot, and you're playing against, you know, one of your high school. How many people could say they played like one of their best friends from high school <laughs> in the finals and, and then beat them? You know uh, what I mean? Talk to us a little bit about that was because, like I said, I don't think many people gave you guys a chance because of Shaq and Kobe's dynamic, but you guys just had a deeper, better team. Man, you know what? It, it was, like I said, it was, you know, we were built on against all odds, like my man Tupac said, right? You know, yeah. we, we, felt, we felt like we were misfits. You know, we felt like teams gave up on us too early. My situation in Washington, Chauncey's situation, him, you know, being on a few teams before he got there. Tayshawn yep. being a n number 22nd pick at that time when he felt like he should have been a top 15 pick. Ben Wallace being moved all around. You know, him not being respected. Rashid, you know, uh, going through the, the stuff that he went through in Portland. So yeah. we felt like, we felt like, man, like, to be honest, we were the better team, you know. But going against L.A., like I said, going against Shaq and Cole, probably the best one-two punch of our air, pretty much. Yeah, and yeah. And Cole, from the de from the standpoint of me knowing him as a kid, always been a killer. So I know that he's gonna come ready, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I I can always remember like uh, going to 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 Ben and, and Chauncey and Sheed and and Tay, and I used to tell him like, "Yo, man, this dude been he beat me for a state championship in high school." Because that was our thing. It was always a back and forth thing. You know who would get the upper hand? Uh, he won there. He he won. He got he won the state championship that year. So when I won a national championship in college, I called him and was like, yo, bro, you can have that high school championship. That shit don't mean nothing. Yeah. I, got a I got a college. He was like, "Rip, <laughs> man, in two years, I'm going to have two NBA championships. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> he was like, trust me, two years, I'm going to have two of them. So that, you know, me, that back and forth was, was us since kids. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he was like, man, you know what? I'm, no. So when we got there on that stage... And knowing the history of us going back and forth and always competing mm -hmm. against each other, I'm looking at Chauncey and I'm like, bro, I can't let this dude beat me again. Hell nah. Like, like I, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't live with myself if he beats me on the highest stage. Like, bro, y'all dudes have to have my back. And I can remember Ben saying to myself, bro, what you talking about, Rip? Shit, I got Shaq. <laughs> like you, you saying all this other stuff I gotta guard Shaq And I gotta guard him head up I said bro I get it I get it But I can't leave this game This series With with, with allowing this dude to beat me So you know It, it was fun man uh, Like I said Confidence wise We believe that we can beat them You know But we knew it was gonna be An uphill, uphill battle Just knowing that the roster They had up They had set up With Gary Payton And Carl Malone on that team uh, Also but uh, we just felt though it was our year. Mm. Talk to us a little bit. Uh, Carmelo Anthony recently spoke uh, on Instagram Live at D-Wade uh, a few days ago talking about if, if in 03, you guys would have drafted, uh, if the Pistons would have drafted him, he felt like you guys could have won two, three championships. And on paper, that sounds about right. But then you see a few days later, Ben Wallace said he just doesn't know if that would have worked. Uh, you know, Tayshawn was there. He would have wanted, uh, Melo would have wanted to play more, sooner. What do you think would have happened if you guys would have actually drafted Melo? Man, first of all, I think that I would have played at least 20 years in the NBA if we <laughs> did draft <him> Melo. <laughs> I, I, I do. I don't, I don't know what Ben was talking about. I really don't. I love body to death. But I don't know what the hell he was talking about when he, when he, when he said that. But uh, if Carmelo Anthony... <laughs> Comes to Detroit, man. Ooh listen, wee. problem. Uh, Melo was a once in a generational type talent. talent. People sleep, man. I, I, Straight I, up, I, 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 I tell people if Carmelo comes to us, me and Chauncey talk about it. Would the narrative been di different with LeBron James? Man, talk to him. Oh, because he's winning. Cha he's winning possibly more championships than than than, than Braun at the time, than D Wade at the time, and that's been the only knock. Just he, had, he had y'all team around him? Mm. Just think about it, Matt. I don't think 
that Cleveland team beats us. No, with, with Carmelo Anthony. Ooh, nah, nah I, I, hell I, nah, hell I don't. nah. I agree. Like, I don't like, think like, so come either. Come on, like, I don't like think if, nobody beats y'all. I think the narrative will be different on Carmelo Anthony. There's you know what no I'm saying? No question. The 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 biggest. I mean, like like the way we were structured when guys came to our team, like guys followed in line. Like when I when I came from Washington, I wasn't a defender. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a guy that really strapped up on the defensive end. You know, but when I got there and seen Big Bro Ben Wallace doing it night in and night out and saying this is to. the fa- this is the foundation of what this team is built on, mm. I got to fall in line. Chauncey Billups got to fall in line. Chauncey wasn't looked at as no defender before he got to Detroit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we all had to fall in line because of what Ben was beginning to build in Detroit. So now you bring Carmelo to us I think the narrative would have been totally different on his career because the, the, the thing we'll be talking about is, okay, all right, Carmelo Anthony now has three championships already, mm. right? Uh, now Melo's thinking about, you know what, can he do this by himself? You know, mm-hmm. so that would have mm-hmm. been the that would have been the question mark mm. then. You know, going into that next that next uh, uh, negotiation yeah. for his uh, yeah. for his contract, like mm-hmm. okay, I got three already. You know what? Now maybe I want to venture out and see if I can do it on my own. Mm-hmm. That would have been the narrative on Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony would have been a champion. So it, 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 man, if like I said, if he would have been playing on our team, me and Brooks would have played for twenty That's years. Scary. And now, you know, we wouldn't have to, to to carry the load. Like, I wouldn't have to, you know, play 40 minutes a game. Now, yeah. you know, when we're 30-something years old, it's like, huh, Melo, carry us. <laughs> you know, take the, the ball. Let the you know ball what I mean? take care, yeah. Yeah, you carry us. Like, we, we me and Charles, we're going to knock down wide open shots. Tayshawn going to do what he do. Uh, she and bit like, we didn't care. We had no ego. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Only thing that mattered for us was to win basketball games. Yeah. Mm. That could have been special, man. I don't think anyone, like I said, oof. Yeah, it would have been scary. Oof. Like, you think yeah, about I mean, it. If you really scary, think uh... about it, man, because like I said, you guys had all, and this is no knock on Tayshawn. Tayshawn was a very solid 15, 16-year pro, but like you said, Melo was a generational talent throwing in there, and he's a dog in himself. I mean, so he fit right into what the fuck y'all was doing already. So if you had a 30-point-a-game score on that team, Nobody could have beat y'all. No, absolutely. And Tayshawn did everything for us. You know what I'm saying? And it's not the knock on Tayshawn. Maybe Carmelo Anthony doesn't start. Like, like you don't, like, maybe I don't start. Like, like for us, we didn't care. It was all mm-hmm. about us winning basketball right. games. If we can win mm-hmm. and we can put, you know, uh, 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 something up in the rafters that said NBA champions, like, we didn't care who got the glory because at the end mm-hmm. of the day, we felt like we were all going to get paid and have our individual success if we win basketball games. If we don't win, mm-hmm. none of that can happen for us. So That's you guys have happen. a nice run uh, that, that, that slowly comes to an end. You start meeting up with D-Wade and Shaq teams and, you know, LeBron's teams that he was carrying through the Eastern Conference at the time. Um Talk to us a little bit that, the, the, about the game that LeBron took over against you guys in the playoffs <laughs> and, and, and catapulted them to their uh, first finals appearance. Oh, man. That's a memory that I just don't <laughs> want to reminisce <laughs> at all. But uh, you know what? It was, you know, LeBron was, you know, just about to take off, man. We all knew how great he was. You know, we used to always say, especially – when LeBron got to Cleveland his first couple years, and we said to ourselves, like, when this kid figure, figures it out, it's going to be a problem for us <laughs> because he's too big, he's too strong, he's too athletic. He can do so many things on the floor that you just can't stop. He can dominate the game without scoring the ball. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, and we felt like if he beats us, he's, he's the type of guy that you don't allow beat you one time because if he beats you one time, you think he's going to do it every time. And that mm-hmm. game, and I can remember, is, you know, he scored, what, 25 straight points against us, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Flip uh, Saunders was the coach at, at, at the time. Rest in peace, Flip Saunders. And Flip didn't believe in trapping Le- LeBron at the time. So we would ice him every time. And you know, if you ice LeBron and let him come downhill on the big... Trouble over. 
ain't nothing, nothing that he can tell because he's just as big as he's just as mm-hmm. strong as your bigs, and he can probably jump higher than you know yeah. mo- most of your bigs. And he scored. It, well, when you're playing the game, you don't realize he scored 25 straight points, right? But when we had success with LeBron, we will always switch, right? We will say, okay, you know, we had defensive player of the year, Ben Wallace. You know, so mm-hmm. when they go on pick and roll, why do you switch out on him? You know what I'm saying? And then everybody else just man up because we didn't believe in double team. You know, that was that was our thing. We was like, yo, you know, man up, you know? Yeah. Especially, you know, if you if you in a regular season, you know, we ain't going to send a double team, so you, you, you got to man up with it. But once he scored them 25 straight points, I remember coming in the locker room, man, and whew, she was pissed off. She she let let Flip Saunders had it <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at the time, right? And, I, and I'm trying to calm him down, you know, because I'm like, yo, she, the series is not over, you know? Mm-hmm. But she was so pissed off because he was like, man, we don't get, you don't get opportunities like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get mm-hmm. opportunities. Like, it don't come every day that you get an opportunity to make it to the NBA Finals, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, 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 you know, late in your career, you try to get on teams to get that, you mm-hmm. know? But when you, it's, it's very rare that you have that in your, in, in your prime. So, uh, he was pissed off at that time, and and I and I can, I, I can remember going into the next game, uh, game six. I think we played against them, in uh, in uh, Cleveland. We we went in with the game plan, the players, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which was mm. crazy when you think about it, right? Because, sometimes we got to make our own yeah, adjustments. I'm saying that should be happening sometimes more than people realize it, because some of these coaches be on some bullshit, and we're <laughs> out there and we know better. We yes. played it. Yes, yes. So, you know, Flip had, uh, uh, he said the next day, he said, hey, you know what, guys, meet meet at the plane, right? So we were the type of dudes who was like, meet at the plane? Nah, we got to get this right. You know what I'm saying? And Flip was like, nah, meet, meet at the plane. So we came together and said, hey, you know what? All coaches go to the plane. We're gonna, <laughs> right. We'll meet we gonna you there. We're going to have our own practice. Man, <laughs> that's dope. So mm-hmm. we we had our own practice. Like we went in there and said, "Bro, LeBron ain't gonna beat us," you know. Like at, I'm gonna guard him for the first five minutes. Tayshawn give you a break so you don't pick up two fouls early. You know. Mm-hmm. Then we are gonna bring Lindsey Hunter and Lindsey. You gonna come mm-hmm. in at the six minute mark, you know? Just harass and, him. Yes, and then you harass him and you guard him, right? Then Tayshawn, you gonna pick him up in the second quarter, which was a great game plan. The only thing was was that Gibson uh, came out that in Game Six and hit Got high. A, career, a career high like seven threes. He ended up scoring thirty, you know. Boobie. But we took LeBron out the game, which was, in my opinion, the best strategy that you can have. But you know, you you can't do things like that, especially when you're trying to win a championship. Right, uh, definitely. Looking back on your nine years in in Detroit, w- w- what are some things that stand out to you about that? I think the the biggest thing that stand out for me was, you know, sharing that floor with some real ass dudes, man. Like mm-hmm. with some real brothers, man. Like that time in Detroit, man. Like, man, I like like it wasn't basketball, man. Like it was bigger. just fun. It was bigger. Right. It was it was just fun. It's just like hanging out with friends you grew up with. You know what I mean? You know how everybody, first thing they do is get, when they get to the lead, they bring all their homies with them. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, you know, that's what you're familiar with. Like, right. I was playing with my homies. I was playing that's with dope. my brothers. Like, through thick and through thin, I knew them dudes would have my back, right mm-hmm. or wrong. You know, like, like, because, you know, in certain situations, like, I might be wrong. You know what I mean? Because I might, you know, certain games I would talk trash and run my mouth and whatever, whatever. But I looked at Ben and and be like, look, motherfucker, you better have my back. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like if, if something go down, you better go down with me. You know what right. I'm saying? And that was the thing that we had. You know, we was joint by the hip. You know, so sharing that with my brothers and, you know, having fun with it, you know, like we did everything together. We hooped together. We ate together. We hang, we went to clubs together. Like, we did everything together. So, that was the thing that, you know, I miss to this day, you know, that the, the brotherhood that we had amongst, amongst each other. Yeah, we won games. Yeah, we went to the Eastern Conference Finals, won the NBA championship. But that brotherhood that we had, getting, yeah. four, getting four All-Stars uh, in, in the NBA All-Star mm, game, should have had five should've had five with Tayshawn right. that year. 
But that stuff right there, man, I mean, it's hard to come by, man. It's hard to come by when you know the dude that you're playing with really loves you. Like, like mm-hmm. really, yeah. like really has really your back. With you. Yes, mm-hmm. no doubt. It's a special feeling. We had, we had that, uh, you, although it was short, we had that in Golden State, so I know exactly what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Like that brotherhood where it's, it's more than basketball, it's family. Mm-hmm. It hit different when it's like that. Getting a chance to play with Derrick Rose the year after coming off his MVP season. Um, you guys are... In the playoffs, m- mistake me if I'm wrong, game in hand, uh, Tibbs keeps him in, he gets hurt, mm-hmm. and never comes back the same. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that experience a- as a veteran, seeing that process happen to such a, a promising young talent. Oh, man, it, 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 it was tough because that's the reason why I went to Chicago, right? Mm-hmm. I, I seen what was happening in Detroit, and it was kind of breaking up that team, and I was like, all right, you know what, Rip, you know, maybe it's your time to go. Right. So like you start thinking, you start looking at all the different teams. I'm saying, you know, what is the best fit? Right. I knew Chicago at the time needed a two guard. Right. Bad. And, uh, uh, and, and I and I felt like, all right, you know what? I can be the missing piece to get them over the hump, because for Chicago at the time, they were always meet up against the Miami Heat with LeBron and D. Wade. And they didn't have nobody to match up with Dwayne Wade. And. Me and D-Wade had a lot of matchups, you know, mm-hmm. during my career. I mean, Good that battles. dude, great. Like, that dude right there pushed me to, whew, I mean, like, it was tough. Night in, night out trying to guard him, you know, yeah. and also trying to do something on the, on the, on the offensive end. But uh, he was probably one of the toughest guys that I had to, had to guard. But then going to Chicago and playing against Derrick Rose during that time, man, I was like, bro, like, I played with a lot of great players. Derrick Rose during that time, was probably the most talented player I ever played played with. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, as, as, at, at 23 too. At, think about at, that. At, at just starting. At 23, man, yo, this dude was ridiculous, and I seen what he was doing in practice, night in and night out, and he had a great work 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 ethic, and he's very similar to to uh, KD. I always say Derrick Rose and and uh, and KD, they're probably the most two humble superstars I ever seen in my life. Like, mm-hmm. like to give you their shirt off their back. Like, and Derek was that type of guy. So playing against the 76ers, 76ers during that time, and yeah, a lot of people say, hey, you know what, why was Derek in the game? And, you know, I, I would ask the question too. Like me knowing <laughs> <laughs> right. I won before, you know, in right. Detroit. I've been, you know, on the bench at times where, you know, we had an opportunity to go after that record of winning 70 games or whatever because we were killing during one year. And guys like Sheed and Ben was be like, man, get Chauncey off the floor. Get Rip off the court. Or, or they'll call a timeout and get us off the floor. Because, <laughs> because we That's know how, that. Yeah, right. It's we bigger. Didn't, it's bigger it's than bigger. just that game. Mm-hmm. Right. So at that time, you know, you look back at it now. Now you can look back on it. We had that game, right? And you ask that question. Why is he in the game? You know, because we already had that game. In order for us to win an NBA championship, so I, I was always looking at it like, okay, you know what? Once the game, you got the game in hand, especially in the playoffs, you got to get your best player off the floor. You just have right. to. Because right. it's, it's just so much, you know, especially, you know, when you're the focal point of our offense, it's so much he's going to have to deal with, especially when you get later and later in the series, just from a physicality standpoint. You know, the refs, Swallow their whistle a little bit more mm-hmm. now. You know, they let you hold, they let you grab a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? They're not calling the ticky tack fouls that they might call in the regular season. So you you got to know that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, come on, Tibbs. Got to get him mm-hmm. out the game, you know? Yeah. So when that happens, I'm like, oh, snap. I'm like, bro, get up. Like, like get up. Mm, and then when he doesn't get up and he's walking off, man, it... It crushed me, not because of my own individual, you know, uh, you know, me coming there and wanting to win the championship, but just knowing Derek is a good kid. Derek yeah. is a dude that, you know, got a great work ethic, you know what I'm saying, very humble. And this guy right here, man, you know, best point guard in the game. Like, mm-hmm. like, like couldn't nobody mess with D. Rose during yeah. that time, mm-hmm. you know? So to see him going down, I just felt like, like, you know, our chances of winning the championship is, is, is very rare to none. 
Right. And like you said, it's more than just the basketball because he's a good dude. Yes. And, yep. and that shit would make it hurt. You know, some dudes, they say, oh, he's an asshole. But, and the, he was Derrick Rose. I don't know him personally. I just know him from watching and reading stories on him and hearing about his up, upbringing. He's a great dude to go along with a very talented player. Listen, this, really, dude, this dude This dude. said one time in the locker room, we in the locker room, he just signed a $250 million deal with Adidas, another 150 from the Bulls. She got $400 million at 20, what, three years old. Mm. And, I, and I looked at him in the locker room. I said, bro, do you know you just signed for $400 million, right? And he like, <laughs> like, 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 what you mean? You know, like he didn't even know the impact of, of mm-hmm. that. And then I told his brother after, you know, Reggie, after the game, I'm like, yo, congratulations. He was like, Rip, my brother don't even know what just happened. He, he called me, asked me the other day, is it okay if he buys a Bentley? <laughs> I said, what? I said, how many dudes you know that that, that, that just made $400 million mm. that will call his big bro and I'm like, yo, is it cool for me to buy a Bentley? That just tells you mm. what type of dude he is. This type of dude. Mm, now, I don't solid. really like to do hypotheticals, but... The trajectory you saw him on at 23, barring injury, where would he rank amongst the greats if we were, Mm -hmm. shit, what, 15 years, 16 years in, and and D. Rose was just able to play through with no injury? Where does he rank in the historic? Because to me, he was was a generational talent as well, but probably one of the most special. At at his position? Yeah. At his position? Man, dude, I mean, man, you, you, you talk about the great ones. There's a lot of great ones out there. You know, yeah. we talk about Magic and, you know, John Stockton and all the ones that played before us. But in my opinion, Derrick Rose is definitely top 10 easily. You know, could be mm-hmm. top five. Man, mm-hmm. this dude, like, like I'm telling you, like, I, I mean, there's a lot of great players in our game right now when you're talking about the point guard's position. Russell Westbrook. Russ. You know, you talk mm-hmm. about... You, uh, uh, Steph, uh, CP, Steph, CP, Kyrie. Yeah. Kyrie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen. None of them dudes wanted no smoke with Derrick Rose and Derrick <laughs> right. Rose there. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you right now, none of them dudes wanted no smoke with D Rose during D. that Rose time. D Rose was a problem. Trust Straight and up. believe. Yes. D Rose was a problem. Let's talk about on court accessories in the early 2000s because you had probably one of the most fashionable statements. You know what I mean? You, know, I heard you, you, had, you had broke your nose a few times, you get the mask, and I had to try to play with the mask one time. I couldn't handle it. I took it off. I risked everything. Other guys couldn't play with it. You made that, you know, like a household. You made that just as household as you made your name. Talk to us about that process and why you decided to keep that mask on. Well, well, one, uh, I, I hated it too, man. Like, <laughs> like, shit, I done broke my nose three times. And, uh, Damn. You, you know, the one thing about it is when you break your nose and you got to go through the surgery, it was putting me out like six weeks. Like, you know... Just on a simple fact, they had to uh, readjust my septum, and the first time I broke it in like 14 different pieces. Mm. Uh, so, and from a team standpoint, Ben and always Ben used to always say, "Man, I can't afford afford to lose you when it really counts, right?" Mm. So I really had to think about, you know, hey, long term, if you know if this happens in the playoffs, then I won't be able to play. So uh, once I started wearing it, I, I tell people it's like. You know, as a kid going trick or treating, and you know nobody goes trick or treating with their mask on for the whole three hours. It's like <laughs> I, you, 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 you're running from house to house, right? But you only put your mask on when you ring the doorbell. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I had to wear that thing for a whole entire game. It's getting foggy, it's getting clogged up, and everything else. But the, the thing that I loved about wearing it is, you know, as players, you know, we don't want to get hit in the face. So every time mm-hmm. you 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 go into the basket, a lot of times guys tense up like oh man I I don't want to get poked in the eye or you know get my teeth knocked out or whatever whatever so once I wore that mask now I kind of became invincible because now as I'm going to the basket I don't give a damn if I get hit in the face you know as long as I get two free throws (laughs) that 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 was the thing but once I started wearing it wearing it I started to feel like you know all right this is like my cape like my Superman cape like Mm -hmm. if when people come to watch basketball you know this Wearing a mask kind of separates me from everybody else. We got a lot of great talent in our game, right? Every night you can come watch uh, NBA basketball and you'll see guys that are elite, that are great, you know what I'm saying? And have a great brand around them. And I was just like, hey, you know what? What separates you from the rest of the NBA, the rest of the guys in the NBA? Wearing a mask. So once I started wearing it, I got used to it. And then it kind of became like my super, Superman cape and I you know, never took it off ever since. 
That's dope. I love that. That's that's that we that's one of the memorable looks. Like that, yo, you and the mask fall in the category with Iverson, with the uh, with the arm sleeve and the headband. Uh, LeBron with the black mask in Miami. Remember LeBron had the oh, dark yeah. night mask in Miami? They yeah. wouldn't wear, they wouldn't let me wear the black mask. That was crazy because <laughs> I, I thought about it. Right, I thought about it. I said, hey, you know what? When I first got my mask done, I said I'm gonna wear the black a black mask in an All Star game. Ooh, that'd right? be cold. And they, got, and, been dope. They, and they made a big deal about, oh, you can't wear it. You're going to get fined. And, you know, they won't let you play any game with it. And then I turn on the TV and see LeBron James with a black mask on. Man, I was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, what, what, like, what is going on here? Like, I, I, I started this shit. This is the motherfucking thing. Absolutely. It's the I get. I get. <laughs> yes. 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 But come to find out. I, I heard that he didn't he didn't let the team know what mask he was going to wear, and he kind of just wore it. You know, he came to the game and just kind of surprised everybody by wearing the black mask. That's what she said. Yeah. Did. Two questions for you. Even though the season's not going on, who did you, who did you think was going to the finals, and who what what young talent you like and you watch the most? Two questions. Mm. Oh man, I think for for me, who was the team that I thought that was going to the finals? Y'all might be mad at me, but. I was going with the Clippers, man. <laughs> I'm, not, he, he I'm, not I'm not mad too. at you. He I'm was not mad too. at you. Okay. He was too. Oh, Matt was on board with me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, I was going with the Clips, man. I mean, listen. Yeah, you got AD and LeBron, right? And I think with them having, with, 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 with LA having AD, you know, the Clippers don't have nobody that can guard him. That's the one mismatch that they do have, you know, but... And it's hard to bet against LeBron James. Like, I'll right. never yeah. bet. I played against this dude. <laughs> right. Like, like that, you know. that is something that I just nope. won't Don't do. Don't bet against LeBron. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Not, not, even, not even close. I, I, I won't do that, right? I won't go on the record Word. and say that. But the Clippers, man, what they have, uh, you know, they got a bunch of dogs on their team. And mm -hmm. then you look at their bench with Lou Williams and uh, Mon Montrez. Montre Montrez coming off the bench. They got guys that can fulfill roles because in the playoffs, you need other guys to win you a game. Yes, like, yes, sir. You know, you can't depend on Brian and AD to win you all seven games, all four right. games. You can't. Right. It's always right. another guy that going to that has to win the game for you. Like, even when we had battles with, with, with y'all in, in Indiana, Austin Crozier won y'all a game one time. Yeah, you know, like, yes, like you yes, need sir. other guys to win one game for you. And I just think that the Clippers, they have too many pieces. I mean, they got a great coach with Doc Rivers. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they got the infrastructure. You know, the the thing that, the, the shit that Kawhi Leonard did last year and taking that Toronto, mm. Toronto uh, Raptors team all the way to the finals and winning it and putting yeah. that team on his back. It's like, yo, man, like, I, I'm not human. My my new nickname should be Robot because that's, <laughs> that's what he reminds me of, of, of a right. robot. Like, but... I, I would have to go with the Clippers, even though I don't want to bet against LeBron, LeBron James. I, I, yeah. I, I, it's, yeah. it's a toss-up, man. It's a toss-up. He's definitely the coming out he of L.A. Had, he had the Lakers, but yeah, that's, that's what I found. I mean, I think the safe bet is to say it's coming out of it's L.A. It's coming out of no, L.A. And that's no disrespect to the East. You know what I mean? I yes. think the East is very talented, but you got you to gotta do it. You know, you got guys who have done it in, in, on this West Side. So It's definitely coming out of L.A. So Who's, I'm going to give you props, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's uh, some of the young talent you enjoy watching these days? Oh, man, I'm a fan, man. So I, I love a lot of these young kids that's coming out. Coming out. I, I, I love John Morant right now. I mean, he's... Everybody like, say him first. Yeah, man. He's he's a dog, man. He's a beast, man. Like, with him, what he when he was going through it with... Uh, the whole Andre Iguodala thing. Yeah. And, you know, when Steph said something, and he was like, hey, man, I love you, but I'm coming at you. Like, yeah. like, like yeah. you love that because, you know, you don't hear that all the time, especially, you yeah. know, in, in this new era of, of, of basketball, you know. Mm -hmm. But but he's a guy that, you know, I watch, you know, all the time. Uh, another Shout guy out Morant. That, that episode dropped, not to cut you off, Rip. Out that now. John Morant, out now. Yeah. Uh, out an now. Check an it out. Another guy that I love that he that doesn't get a whole lot of credit is Devin Booker. I Ooh. think Devin Booker is a Ooh. problem. He's a pressure think, cooker. Ooh, yes. he's a pressure cooker. He's just mm. on a bad team right now. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? But he he he's a dude that I respect, that I love. He can make he can he can make plays on and off the ball. He can come off pin downs. You know, he can impact the game in different ways. You know, just hopefully that, you know, they can get their act together in Phoenix and 
put him in winning situations. But he's another young young kid that you know I, I love to watch. He's because he, he's Kobe s to me. He's got some Kobe in him, and he and he plays the right way. And yep, the thing yeah. that I love about him is in the summertime he looks for the guys that made All Star game. He looks for the guys yeah. mm-hmm. that are supposed to be the best guards in the mm-hmm. NBA. And when you got mm-hmm. guys like that, man, you, you I, I gotta rock out with them. Love it, love it. Present present day player that you would love to play with. Oh, oof. man, for me, for me, I would have to say oof. Steph Curry. Nice. Mm. I, I do. I mean, because, you know, I love what they do in Golden State. And Matt, you can you can test to this uh, that when you got a guy like Steph, the way he impacts the game without having the ball in his hand. Right. Mm-hmm. Can play on and off the ball now. You got to pick him up, you know, as soon as he comes past half court. You know, mm-hmm. I would love to get an opportunity to play with another guy that moves off the ball similar yeah. to myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I, when I, that, them, them Golden State teams that they had, now you're playing against a team that have three guys that can move without the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, Unfair. Uh, uh, you got Steph, you got Clay, and you got KD. Like, you can't guard that. Mm-mm. You can't guard that. You can't trap that anybody on the floor. So I would have to say Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Who should be our next guest on All the Smoke? Who do you think should be our next guest? And on All the before Smoke? you answer this, like Jack said, if you give us a guest, you got to plug them. We need the plug. Okay, yeah. Got, yeah. gotcha. If I, me, in my opinion, because it, it's 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 who fits this is my guy Rashid Wallace. Ooh, yes, yeah. we got we got to get she. I, I think I, it's I, she. I, I just I just did just, him him and. Him and Bonzi podcast, I just did their podcast. Shout out to Bonzi and Sheed Tech podcast. Mm-hmm. But uh, we definitely got to get Sheed on there. And, I, and like Matt said, too, I really think we should all get together and do that brawl sit down. I think that'll be dope. No, that'll be dope because now you you hear the backstory on mm-hmm. what guys were thinking during that time. Because mm-hmm. we we all we all seen it and, and seen it totally differently. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. was stuff that was going on over there on y'all bench that I didn't even know what was going on until I watched it on uh, on the highlights, on, on film, or, the, or when they brought us in that room when they did that investigation, and they brought out all them different cameras, and they showed you, showed everything that was going on. No, that would be dope. I, I definitely think we need to sit down. You need. I, I think the hardest person to probably was going to get is going to be Big Ben. So you oh, work yeah. on Big Ben, and we're going to try yeah. to get Jack's side held down. If you get Big Ben, we're going to make that shit happen. I got you. I'll work on it. I might have to no. put him in the headlock. <laughs> hey, now, I, I, I talked I talk, I talk to Ben not too long ago. Ben, man, Ben down with it. You know, Ben is a 100 brother, dog. Yes. Man, we all, yeah, we all yeah. come, come together. He definitely down with it. Yeah, no. after the quarantine, man, we got to make uh, Showtime. Bring all you guys out to L.A. We sit out and, and definitely talk about that. that, that yes, that'd, that'd be crazy. That'd be yeah. crazy. That'd be dope. Um, artist or song you got on repeat right now? Oh man, it's that it's that Drake right now, that Tootsie slide, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how, how crazy is his crib though, man? Oh, that's insane. crazy, dog. Oh that's my goodness, crazy. You got the dance down, I, man? Listen, I'm trying. I can't dance, man. Look, <laughs> like, yeah, that's on my that's on my bucket list slide. right now. I just uh, I just started a TikTok, slide. man. So I'm gonna get out there and try yeah. get out there and try it a little bit. But, my twins nice. be doing that shit. I'm like, I'm I'm six eight. Get out of here we're trying to get me to do that shit. Yeah, no, I'm going I'm to give it a shot, too. Watch. Yeah, I'm going to try it, it out. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. look crazy, though. <laughs> That's what's up. Quarantine, quarantine. What you binge watching? Oh, man, for me, uh, a few shows. Netflix, man, uh, that All-American show. Dope. Yeah, of I course. Think, That's, that, I'm watching that, too. <clears throat> that, that's dope. Uh, uh, Ozark. I mean, of that's course. Dope. We're man, all watching that. <laughs> yes, yes. And my, and my other one is uh, Narcos, Mexico. Ooh, hell oh, hell yeah. 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 I'm, that shit is crazy. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's insane right now, man. That, I, that, I, I, I watched all that in the first two days it came out. I've been watching that. I, <laughs> so I got the I drop got on Norcos because I work with someone in another business that does the merch for Norcos. So Norcos is going to start going around the world and kind of making it almost a franchise. So the next Norcos is going to be, I can't say it, it's going to be so dope, but like get your mind that it's just Mexico. So they have it like Norcos or they want to like highlight just the biggest drug dealers in different parts of the world. 
Oh wow! So the, the next one they got coming out is about to be cold, but yeah. Oh, what wow. a, hey, what a coincidence! You have the drop on Narcos. I know. Give us the plug, <laughs> man. What a we coincidence, can... though. Yeah, what a coincidence. I know, right? <laughs> I know bro. We trying. We trying to be on set. I'm yeah, trying to be on real. set. You see, yeah, you see, Quavo and them got Quavo and them got a spot on that. So I said, I said, definitely bring me on. A, I'll definitely play a little role on. I don't even like to act, but bring me on Narcos. I'll definitely. Me too, do some man. Shit. I'm yes, very nah, familiar with that type of talk. Yeah. Hey, Jack, tell him he got to get us on set. Yeah, yeah I'm familiar. I'll get my that's own what flight. I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got, you got to uh, have us on there. Last thing, uh, quarantine snack. I know you like to stay in shape, but what's your, what's your binge snack right now? Oh, my goodness, man. Dude, trust me. Yeah, we all do right now. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies, man. Oh, oh my God. I made some the other day. I, listen, and they got to be homemade. Homemade chocolate chip the cookies, ones. man. The soft ones. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the soft ones. Right there. A- listen, as soon as, they get up, as soon as they get out the oven, Ooh. oh, man, I might eat a whole tray of them. Quiet as kept before they motherfucking go in the oven. Before they go in the oven. <laughs> before they go. <laughs> I had pecans yes. to mine, man. That, they always A1. Hey, Jack, send me some, dog. I can put I them in the microwave, dog. <laughs> I got you, my boy. I'll put them to the test. All right, last uh, segment right here before we let you go is Jack has a begging segment. So, Jack, what you want to ask Rip for? What you want to beg for, my guy? Man, uh, you know, I, w- I really wasn't prepared for a begging segment today. Uh, I was just excited to talk to my brother like I want to uh, say again. You know, we had a man, 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 Rip was real, real close. Uh, like I said, I, I became real, real close with a lot of his friends. Some of his friends from Coastville still be DMing from, DMing from time to time. That's but uh, it, it was just good to actually get on, get on, get on, uh, on the show, get you on the show, and to talk to you about the McDonald's game and stuff, conversation that I always wanted to have with you. But I can't really wait to have you in, on set so we can really dig deep into some things that, yeah. you know, that we both got in common from our lives. That's dope. 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 I wish I'd have yeah. been. I wish I'd have came to the office in L.A. with y'all, man. No, we you know gonna what I'm saying? You. We gonna Dude, get it. Nah, that's love. It I, I got you, man. Jack, that's Dope. family. Dope. Man, you family too, though. Dog. I, I respect that. you all the way, 100. Thank you, man. Well, man, that's a wrap. Special guest Rip Hamilton on our episode today. Jack, hell of a show. Rip, Good hell job, of a show. Bro. We appreciate your time, yes, man. Yes, sir. Anytime, anytime. Thank you. You can catch this on Showtime Basketball YouTube or all platforms streaming podcasts. All of them. There's something about how this place forms a different kind of person. On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. You mentioned Prince George's County. People know what it's about. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. Being from this area, you have to have tough skin. The gym became the sanctuary. PG County guys provide buckets for America. You take it like too serious. Prince George packs a lot of power, a lot of character. I don't really think they, they hear me. It's nothing that you can do to stop that competitive edge. We're pushing the community and the culture forward. It's just in the water. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com.